Hello, welcome to another Dungeons and Dragons High Roller Adventure. I'm your Dungeon Master, Mark Sherlock Humes, and joining me on these marvelous adventures today are my companions. <laughs> we have just <laughs> hand gesture this time. <laughs> you know what it means. You can see me. Uh, <laughs> Big silly. Show them. Show them, Christopher. Show them the meaning of haste. Welcome. Uh, I Dad am Marshall Akims. <laughs> Dad, don't, don't bring up data facts. Data That's facts. That's a joke only you and I will understand. Um, I don't get it, but I like it. <laughs> Uh, I am your Dungeon Master, Mark Sherlock Hughes. Uh, welcome to High Rollers D&D. I am joined by my good friends, Rhiannon, uh, Dadafax, uh, Lord of All Dads. Uh, I'm joined by Tom <laughs> Lahey, uh, Trot Lahey, cool. and uh, Kim, Mistress of the Big Furry Boys. Uh, the... what? Uh, that sounds... <laughs> no, I am. I am. Yeah. No, she is. Yeah, she is. Mistress uh, of them. That's very fair. Yeah, Fair enough. this week, Katie is doing off, uh, doing family cool things. Um, no doing, doing off this week. family. <laughs> doing what off family. family. <laughs> <laughs> doing off, off doing family things. Doing yeah. off family. Um, and yeah, it's us. We're back. Uh, we apologize. Uh, apologies for last week. I was feeling quite poorly, so we didn't stream. But we're back this week. Um, and before we get into anything else, uh, we're going to celebrate being back by Chris Trot telling about our two very special sponsors <laughs> wowie wowie that's right um wowie. i'll go full screen for this one there's no pre-recording so don't worry about that i'm kingdoms me and mark are very excited about this one because yes uh, yes. today's sponsor is by privateer press and if you don't know who that is <laughs> they make a fantastic tabletop miniature games in the form of war machine and hordes um yeah, 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 yeah. the iron kingdoms rpg which is already out is set in the same universe and best of all the one that's released now is using the fifth edition DD rule set so it's a breeze to be <laughs> immerse yourself in this new setting if you haven't heard of it before wowee uh, so a bit wowie, of information wowie. as to why you should be excited as me and Mark. Over its lifetime, the Iron Kingdom's RPG line has been the recipient of 16 EN World Awards. It's award-winning 16 times over. You can jump into the Iron Kingdom's now uh, with Borderlands and beyond. Let me show you <gasps> right now. Uh, Borderlands and beyond. Wow, look at these bookies. <laughs> They're on my face. Wow. <laughs> So um, the Kickstarter has already been heavily successful. Uh, the PDFs of the books will be available just a few weeks after the Kickstarter ends, so you won't have to wait for the print copy to start playing. Uh, Borderlands Beyond, what you're seeing on screen right now, I'll flick through the stuff, um, is you get the survival guide, the shadow of the secret adventure, and details aspects of the Iron Kingdoms that have never been explored in the RPG setting before. And it's really nicely laid out, as you can see. Here, look at that. Nice. Highlights include five new races, three new core classes, 25 new subclasses, over 100 oh. new spells in Borderlands and Beyond. This one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. That one. <laughs> and there's a new variant and optional rules and many strange new monsters in the Borderlands. Uh, survival Guide. There you go. That's where the loads of new monsters are Man. in that one. And there's a gothic story set in the alien forests of Loss in the Shadow of the Seeker. Wow, I timed that so well. Uh, as it current... <laughs> And it's current look at that progress. Cover. Look at that. Look it's at really that cool. Boy. It's, it's cool really cool. Uh, I can show you some insights as well. I, I'll Not I'll of the monsters, a little bit. but... Uh, if you don't know, so uh, so Iron Kingdoms and War Machine, it's kind of got this whole... Um, I wish these books had been out when we started Erois because I would have absolutely used so much of this stuff in there because it's all like magipunk and, and kind of steampunk combined. It's a world of mecha oh. that you have like fancy oh. mecha uh, called so Warjacks. Cool. You can be a mage that can command and control these kind of like robot mechs and things like that. You could be a gun mage. They have a gun and magic combined, uh, which is so cool. I know. Uh, if, uh, I've been recently on a big anime binge in the anime Outlaw Star, and it's like super rad to that. Yes. There's like so much cool stuff. You could be a marksman. There's all sorts of really cool grenadier, alchemist, 
Um, and this was all in the fifth edition Iron Kingdoms book, which is already out, and, and Privateer Press kindly sent me a PDF copy. I was super excited to read through it. So many cool rules on how to use these kind of rope, uh, the machines, the warjacks, how to use loads of these new types of spells, loads of new classes, subclasses. Yeah. Genuinely wish this stuff had been out when we started uh, Heroes. I would have used so much of it. Love the setting, love the world. Um, you know, I, me and, me and Trot played some games of War Machine. Uh, he played as the fervent uh oh, what the, men off the 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 kind yes, of religious the zealotous uh, fanatics they mm. love fire and cleansing and burning things <laughs> they um, do and uh, really yeah cool. really oh, excited God, to be same, sponsored by privateer press and the iron kingdom rpg and this borderlands and beyond seems to be a great way to kind of jump in and get more yes. out of this setting so there so, are other books that have been released already in previous kickstarters oh. and they'll be available to order soon however you can just jump in at borderlands and beyond you do not need the previous books to do it and this kickstarter ends in just four days so i highly recommend you jump on this please go and jump on and it get it yeah uh, use our get link it now use, our, use link our link in the description and wowee what a sponsor, eh, Mark? Yeah, I'm I'm super excited about this one. This is one of those ones where it came through and we really wanted to try and do like a one shot in this, but because the Kickstarter is ending in four days, we just didn't have the time to do it in time for the Kickstarter. But I'm definitely hoping that we can talk to Privateer Press and do more because I think we'd love it. I, I, Tom's reaction to Gun Mage kind of says it all that he was like, what? Oh, oh, um, and Rihanna and, yeah. and Kim, I can awesome. see you guys loving the world like yeah. yeah i like the Very sound cool. of burning and cleansing that's that, that's mm. right on my street that's why i went yeah. with them too kim yeah yeah thing. burn everything <laughs> but, uh, very yes. very cool Cleanse please go and check out the kickstarter fire. Use the link to let them know that High Rollers sent you because if loads of people, you know, obviously go and check out the Kickstarter from us, that might encourage them to do more with us in the future for a really cool setting. So make sure you go click that link and check out Iron Kingdoms. But that's but and it's all in fifth edition as well. That was the beauty for me. I was just like, I understand this. We game. had no idea. We thought, oh, it. a new RPG system. Nope. It's something it's we can just in jump edition. into. Perfect. Yeah. Love so it. So good. Talking uh, of something you can then, jump uh, into really quickly yeah, oh, and easily. Oh, wow. 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 <laughs> what a transition. Incredible. D&D wow. um, nice Beyond. Uh, if you want the easiest method of playing D&D 5th Edition, why go anywhere else other than D&D Beyond? Oh, come on. What's wrong with me? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, come. So, so hard. Of, of course, uh, Earlier, Rhiannon tweeted all about uh, the horde of dragons that await you in Fizzban's Treasury of Dragons, which is uh, releasing oh, yeah. in just a couple of days, I believe, October Tuesday. 26th on Tuesday. Uh, it's the latest Dungeons and Dragons book, and it's jam-packed with dragon lore. Monsters, Very two good. subclasses, three dragonborn ancestries, plus additional feats and spells. But, obviously, if you pre-order it on D&D Beyond, you're going to get some exclusive digital perks when the book launches let me just show you there you go wow you got all these portraits you can have a coiling dragon portrait you can have crystal shards just exploding Ooh, out well that's um, all connected to the amethyst dragon one of the new dragons in fizzband's well there you go dragon. and these animated no. ones as well which are really nice Ooh, you get I three themes eight backdrops ones. there's a digital dice set of dragon eggs come mm. on come on Sorry, oh. I, don't know. I, got so... I love dregs. <laughs> Tons Dragon of eggs. Eggs. So if you pre-order on D&D Beyond, you get all those extra goodies, as well as, of course, the entire book, which is easily searchable using D&D Beyond search engine and add it into your yeah, campaigns yeah, very yeah. easily. All that kind of thing. Yeah, I need a Wii. Yeah, yeah. All right, okay. <laughs> Why did you not do I got that so before we so excited by our sponsors today. Right, I see. Okay, okay, I get Pushed you. it all out. So, um, oh, it's already amazing. gone. Amazing. <laughs> and again, he's do gone, make sure done. you check out. He's I'm gone. He's, he's, he's let loose. Uh, make sure you check. click the links. Go and check out D&D Beyond. If you use our link, it lets D&D Beyond know that you came from us. Continues our let, having a wonderful relationship with D&D Beyond. And they'll hopefully keep sponsoring. Yeah, we're not at the it. kissy stage yet, but I'm hoping for it. We can build up to it. Um, and yeah. So that's it. Thank you very much to both of our sponsors, Privateer Press and D&D Beyond. Uh, go and check out Iron Kingdoms, uh, Borderlands and Beyond and just go check out D&D Beyond in general because it's awesome. Uh, and we use it all the time. A uh, couple yes. of other things uh, that we can launch into. Kim, can you tell us about merchy based things uh, while, as Katie's not here? Yes, I can, Mark. Hey there, everybody. Uh, Are you God, like hey, me Kim, and you hey. find your life colorless and dull? I'm going to go oh, for yes. a pee. Okay. How long yes. do I need to is fill? He, is he... 
I mean, okay. uh, knowing Chris Trot, this is like he doesn't watch his five minutes. Right, I was getting in my flow, for God's sake. Are you like me and your life is colorless and dull and you need trinkets to make you feel like you have some purpose? Then yes. next week, look at the High Rollers store because at 4 p.m. BST or GMT or whatever time we are in in the UK next week, 31st of October, Halloweenth day, we are releasing not one, but two pin badges. First of all, bum, 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 bum. for the DM and all of us. Bum, bum, Yay, bum, 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 bum. DM pin. We have our Dungeon Master pin badge, which is representative of our Lord and Savior, Mark Sherlock Humes, but also oh, yeah. we also... that Dungeon Master in your life. <laughs> exactly. So we purposely designed this one to be, you know, and big, you know, it could be any Dungeon Master. It's not just me. Like, yeah, there you go. It can be it's, anyone, it's any DM. That vacant evil stare of all yeah, the danger the and consequences have. they're gonna inflict <laughs> the loaded d20 so that they can always uh -huh. smite you with crits and the yep. book of secrets and lies so that will be one of two badges the second <laughs> <laughs> I'm forever referring, from forever referring to my notes as the book of secrets and lies. That's great. It's perfect. Um, and then the second badge we're releasing is um more important than this um, one. Um, I can't um, really. It's, yeah, it's, 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 it's everyone's favorite snake. It's my wine. snakey girl. Oh, she's adorable. She no longer has snake hair, but we didn't tell Nina that. Um, well, <laughs> yeah. so we like, know <laughs> it was going to happen at that particular point. And also, I think that that's how. Yeah, oh, all right. Yeah, them. stop that yeah. shit. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think most people will remember Thalia mainly as like in the Medusa form. That's how we met her and stuff. Like, I think uh, that's that's how it's going to work. So, yeah, we're uh, a part of the NPCs. You know, we've started doing. We've done a couple of NPCs now. Um, have we? Maybe one. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, there's yeah. more. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> maybe yeah. there's yeah, more. But, there is uh, more coming. Bane of yes. stars. But yeah, these, yeah, we... they're not on the store. They're not on the store now. So don't go looking now and be like, oh, they're next week. Out. They will go on the store. 31st of October, 4 p.m. UK time. That's when these will be up for sale. And they are limited edition. So once they're gone, they're gone. They're gone. That's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Nice. Done Perfect. So. And then if you're there picking up these limited edition pins, why not just help yourself to some of the amazing High Rollers merch that we already have on our merch store. You can find the link in the chat, in the video description, or somewhere uh, else on Twitter, on social media, all of that good stuff. Grab yourself a Clear Skies cropped hoodie, or maybe a t-shirt, or an acid wash, just cool D20 flower design. Is or it High Rollers? Not pin. really. Or a <laughs> <laughs> or a Reynard or Juto pin? Uh, no, Juto's Juto. out of stock. Not Juto. No, yep, it's she's gone. out of stock. Gone. Storm Chasers t-shirt, a Starbane mug, uh, or maybe mm -hmm. a little notebook, or whatever else we have in stock. Why well, do you treat well, yourself? That one's, that's out of stock as well. But that one uh, isn't. That one's not. That one's still available, yeah. That's still available. Oh, Tom, I don't, I don't like them bullying you on this. Man. It's not fair. You could buy the Lucius plush. Oh, wait. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh. Oh. That's fair. I think that's fair. Bravo. Uh, so yeah, go check out our merch. Plush would be awful. <laughs> it would be terrible. It would be, be like loads of those like fake gemstones that just come yeah. off in instantly. Um, but yeah, go and check out the merch. Uh, like I said, merch is a great way to support us, and you mm. get something in return as well. So we love it when people buy merch because it's you get something, we get something. Um, Indeed, it's a great way of doing it. Um, Rhiannon, I'm gonna just. Uh, Rhiannon's not expecting anything. I'll throw it to Rhiannon. Why don't you tell people what amazing milestone we reached on YouTube uh, this week? Oh, yeah. Speaking of support, thank you everybody who subscribed on YouTube and helped us hit 100,000 subscribers. We did it. We did it. Yes. So now we're waiting for old <laughs> Susan to give us our placky plaques. Come on, Come Susan. On, Susan. Susan. Where's our plaque? Swim our walls Susan. shall be adorned. She's taking her time. Hey, what up, Wonder. Sue? Yeah. So, I'm liking um, this, like, um, kind of stand-up spotlight. spotlight you got going on here as well. <laughs> tell a joke. Tell a joke. You're like, yeah. Well, you're like Bo Burnham. Come on, Rhiannon. I don't yes. have any jokes. Uh... <laughs> that's the joke. I've no, got that's one. No, that's you are the joke. Now, Rhiannon. Yeah. I've Please got one. Rhiannon, all you have to do is just open your mouth and I'll do, I'll do your voice for you. Okay. Reynard I pin. I don't, I don't, <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, I was going to do a thing where you'd like, <laughs> where you'd corpse me. And I'd open the mouth, the mouth and you wouldn't just say anything. <laughs> um, but yeah, 
Sorry, uh, Tom. If we had if we had planned out more, we would have done something really special for a hundred thousand subs, but we didn't know when we were going to hit it, and we didn't think about it. We're releasing it, so we pin didn't. badges. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe That's we'll do like, something. We just, we just some didn't point. think about it. <laughs> We've got time for the million one so that we can prepare for that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. prepare for that. Another yeah, nine hundred k to go. Maybe when we get the plaque, we'll do something. But uh, but yeah, thank you so much, everyone, for the hundred k. Um, this is a couple of general reminders now. Um, don't forget, uh, if you have an Amazon Prime, you get a Twitch, you get a free Twitch Prime sub. Why not yep. use it and unlock some of those amazing emotes that we've got in our Twitch chat? Um, go and subscribe to YouTube if you aren't already. Start building on that 100k. We want to get the next one. Um, and podcasts as well. If you'd like to listen to uh, Aroes and, and High Rolls on, on podcast, make sure you subscribe and get the podcast delivered via your favorite podcasting service such as Spotify or any of those other ones that exist. Um, <laughs> Uh, and then the final thing is, Kim, you might need to remind me on this, but the voting for the Game Hers Podcast Award, the Game Hers Awards, no. ends yeah. mm. tomorrow. Yes, twenty fifth. Yes, of October. Twenty fifth. And we're actually yes. up for um, the best RPG campaign category. Yes. Interesting. Yep. Sure. Let's go with that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Kim it's doesn't know enough. either. Uh, it's TTRPG knows. campaign. TTRPG yeah, campaign. campaign. Yeah. Perfect. And by the time this um, goes up on YouTube, we'll have won. So, I, well, well done, everyone. Let's, let's yeah, not well say done. things like that. We just won uh, the Game Hers Award for Best Tabletop <laughs> Campaign of the Year. <laughs> Celebrations, everyone. Okay. Right. Woo! Celebrate With scroll right down, and you'll see our category. There's a load of categories. Yeah. You'll eventually categories, see the yeah. TTRPG one. Game slash vote is where you need to go if you want to cast your vote. Kim's put it in go chat. On over there. there so is Night Jar. Excellent. Perfect. That is it for announcements, I believe. Uh, so without any further nonsense, let's get some dun duns and then let's play some D D. Mm Last time on Erois. Previously, our heroes, having vanquished titans and travelled the plains, attempted to undo a curse placed upon their friend Thalia Whisperwind, a Medusa who had aided them in returning to Erois from the Astral Sea. When the goddess Sayana undid the curse, however, it revealed a second and more powerful one hidden within it, one that will slowly kill Thalia, and for which there does not appear to be an apparent cure or way to break the curse. Along with these revelations also came the knowledge of Thalia's past crimes and her history with the Fae sorceress Mesmera, the one responsible for the curses. Now, the party planned to travel to the Feywild to find Mesmera and undo the curse. Uh, and that's pretty much going to bring us up to speed. The most of the last session we did was figuring out how to reach the Feywild. There were a lot of options. There was a lot of uh, investigation. There was a lot of questions, a lot of use mm -hmm. of powerful magics to yeah. ultimately come back to the well, very first ends. idea they had. <laughs> yeah. 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 There weren't necessarily One dead ends. There was a lot of open ends. There were a lot of ends trend. that were not fully explored. Um, yeah, true, we but, did make uh, a, we, well, Lucius and Quill made a lifetime enemy in a Summer Aladrin. Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we just left him there, never came I back. I didn't do anything. It was all you. Uh, no, I mean, you were it's already true. He his just... enemy. Yeah, he True. already hated, hated slash loved Lucy, Lucius. Um, Lucy. Lucy, Lucius. Lucius. Um, Horrible, yeah. pretty man. <laughs> that is where bastard. we pick up. Uh, Quill used the Storm Eye uh, to ask, uh, it was something along the line of, how do I use the Wayfinder's Guide to reach the Feywild, I believe was your question, wasn't it? Yes, yes. And the answer you received uh, in the vision that you saw was bringing the Wayfinder's Guide to 
Rose Meadow, a centaur who you have met before, uh, and she placed her her hand upon the book, and it lit up one of the gems and seemed to transport you all to the Feywild. Yeah, and also uh, there was a load of extra peeps with us. I think Kyrie was coming as well as Kyrie, Big Cat, uh, yep, both came along, mm -hmm. and um, Rose Meadow herself. Well, at least they were in the vision. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. Mission. And then we ended things with a little moment between Nova and Thalia in a kind of, you know, are we, you know, what's going to go down? There was a lot of, uh, it was a big moment. Um, but yeah, I hand it over, yeah. hand over the reins uh, to whoever wants to kick things off. So we're in the faith. No. No, 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 not yet. no, no. You guys, you had the vision, vision but yeah, yeah, that was the vision. But no, the the last thing that we did was Nova and Thalia talking, um, and I think that there was definitely some. Uh, I know Kim specifically had some stuff that, like, some provisioning that she wanted to potentially do. Um, All right. I didn't know if yes. you guys wanted to make any preparations, uh, anything like that. Uh, now is the time to do so. Um, mm. I will Jaeger pilot. Ayla, so Ayla will be very quiet until <laughs> there is a need for something to be smashed. So, yeah. um, okay. Yeah. I think Ay Ayla's just happy. She's basically already said that she's just going to go with Nova and help put a stop to whatever this is. So, it's uh, fairly easy. Okay. Uh, okay. I would like to purchase stuff. Um, mm -hmm. In particular, I was looking for, because I can't remember if Quill had any or not, but I think Nova in her little nervous way would probably go and buy some anyway. Um, 300 GP worth of diamond dust. Um, yep. And no, that's easy. You, just uh, you can, you can yeah. certainly buy, I would say, probably about Glitter. two two castings of the spell. Uh, so that would be 600 okay. GP of diamond dust. Getting anything more than that, the jewelers in Horizon basically say they can do it, but they'll need like a month's notice to basically buy the diamonds, have them transported to Horizon, grind them down, that sort of thing. Um, mm. But on hand, they probably have enough to make about 600 golds worth of diamond dust, um, okay. which you can purchase now. Yeah, I have uh, two, two times 100 GP of diamond dust for greater restoration. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and you can divvy that. So that 300 that Kim's getting, like you could divvy that out into greater restoration spells as well, as long as you've got 300 GP is for Revivify. Uh, I believe somebody had some diamonds for Raised Dead or something. Uh, yeah, I I'm diamonds. sure I do. Well, uh, was that? Was oh yeah, I've got, a, I've got one. Oh, yeah, I think I've got a diamond for okay. Revivify. Okay. Uh, Raised nice. Dead. Or Raised Dead. Um, yeah. yeah, that stuff's easy to buy. Don't need to do anything special with that. You can just get that in, 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 in a jewelers and horizon. Um, but if you want any more, any more diamonds or diamond dust, they need to, you need to give them advance warning. Um, and it will take about a month mm. for them to have that sourced and brought to the city. Cool. Um, I have removed 600 gold from the party fund. Okay. Cool. I think Nova would probably, uh, give one lot to Quill, but keep mm -hmm. one lot for herself so mm -hmm. tom if you want to mark that you have 300 extra uh gp worth of gold dust and i'll uh, diamond dust and i'll mark 300 for me as well you know okay. just in case Prepare. what is this for what spell is this for glitter just glitter endless glitter wait it's what for... spell um <laughs> she's not saying help me she's out being, here I'm she's being coy all the glitters uh, is gone. uh revivify oh. revivify Okay, because yeah, in case, okay, that gives me that gives me a lot of castings of greater restoration. Mm -hmm. uh, cool. All right, nice. Or revivify. Can you revivify? Oh, that, I don't have it ready. Yeah, he as long as he prepares it. Remember, as Quill as a cleric has to prepare mm. those spells in advance. So as yes. long as he's prepared it, he can cast it. <laughs> Imagine Nova. I believe. Is I believe Rhiannon. I, I believe Sentry yeah. can also cast revivify, and she, you yeah. pretty much always okay. prepare it, don't you, Re? So yeah, I always have it on me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you've got a couple of people that can do it. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm a healer, fine. but... <laughs> um, maybe I'm giving that gold dust to, to Sentry instead. The, the, dust, uh, the diamond dust. Maybe I'm giving it to Sentry instead. <laughs> I've got... I've got, um, I've got Raised Dead. I don't have it prepared, but I've got the stuff for it. And Raised Dead is way more powerful. In any way, this conversation, you can go into this a bit later on when other stuff is happening. You can figure out inventories. What else? Is there anything else you wanted to grab or prepare in town? Anyone? 
Uh, uh, I wanted to inquire about a sequester scroll, but I have mm. a feeling it is not going to happen. Who are you going to inquire with? I think I'd probably maybe ask Rosemeadow first, like as a lead. Oh, or, you know. I mean, Rosemeadow wouldn't have any knowledge of that stuff. Like she, if you oh. go and speak to her, uh, she will base. She she doesn't really know anything about magic. Like all of mm. her stuff is like literally like lotions. It's not even like potions, but, really. She occasionally makes healing potions, but. Would she know where to go? Like, you know, the industry and... In Horizon, not really. Um, she's only not been here that long herself. Um, you, she, she'd probably be like, if you don't know anybody, I, I don't know anybody, is her kind of attitude. Um, for something like okay. a sequester scroll, I mean, Nova would know you'd need a powerful spellcaster. I mean, this is a, this is like Maybe a Maybe one that was spell. enhancing the storm chaser, perhaps. <laughs> Kim's making a face. Um... They Wait, had a oh store. Her name, her name always makes me. Oh, petal. Yeah, I was thinking of the other one that sounds like a hand gel. Um... No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the one that's a little. I, I've forgotten her name as well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Who you're Ray, talking do you about. know? Do you know? Do you know? Uh, uh, his name? Perel. Perel. Yeah. Oh, Perel. Yeah, yes. Azaria Perel. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Azaria. One half. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds Perel. like a hand gel. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, sure. Um, Azaria Perel, um, who is normally stationed in Gusthaven, but you know that she did stop by Horizon to work on the Storm Chaser and stuff, um, is one of those people who, who is, if you, if somebody's going to know about powerful magic, Azaria Perel's probably going to know. Danica might know. Danica mm -hmm. is an extremely powerful sorceress as well, although less into the making things like scrolls and magic items. Azaria Perel is literally, that is her thing. She makes powerful magic items. Um, is definitely a person to go and ask. Um, you could try and ask Petal. You know, Petal did have like a little tinker's shop, but it was sort of like a florist meets tinkers. Um, and Sentry would know I... that her mother, like Petal's mother, the Queen Astoria, was yeah. an exceptionally powerful sorceress, or very much like Azaria Perel. You know, used to make items and make magical relics and was technology. Petal and stuff was like that. sequestered, wasn't she? Mm -hmm. Yeah. She was, yeah. Yeah, that's how she survived. Mother. Knows best. I kind of feel like it might be a bit of a sore so topic, though. Like you know how your mum kind of sequestered you for many, many years, and it was all a bit heated. Do you, like, do you know anything about it? About that? So, sure. I, could you write that down on a scroll for me, so I could go save my girlfriend? Cheers. No. Um. Can I go talk to um Lady Perel, please? <laughs> yeah. For the sake of convenience, um, if you say like have somebody cast a sending spell, Azaria will probably teleport to horizon and come and speak with you she'll just use a teleportation circle and come and meet you mm -hmm. um and yeah when you you meet with her and she's just like ah yeah snowvin all dressed in black the kind of mourning attire that she wears with a thick black veil over her face these long black uh, embroidered robes with like gold and silver sort of accoutrements and uh, embroidery um and she comes and meets you at the citadel of the uh, of horizon citadel of the reborn and uh she she greets you quite warmly she's like ah the storm chase it's wonderful to see you again is there something in, in particular that i can help you with you mentioned uh needing my assistance with something any particular enchantments or such i am in desperate need of a sequester scroll or a way to cast sequester 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 she kind of thinks for a moment and then she uh, reaches into what appears to just be like a small satchel bag at her side, kind of a very well-tailored leather strap. And she reaches in and pulls out a, like a, what looks to be a large tome and she begins flicking through it. Ah. She puts the book back. Such a spell. I am capable of casting spells of an equivalent level in power. But that particular spell, knowledge of it has long been lost. I, I don't know the spell formula to cast such a spell, and therefore I have no way of conjuring or crafting scrolls for it. Uh, I would need to learn it from some sort of source, either a caster who knew it, or uh, a scroll of it, or a spell book that contained it. I would need such information to be able to copy it. But such magic has not been seen since the days of Solven. Solwyn, uh, Queen Astoria herself, was one of the greatest spellcasters and um, was known to use the spell. Uh -huh. But... Unfortunately, it is not one that I know. And uh, I, you will be hard-pressed to find someone a Rois who does know it, I'm afraid. 
Quill. Quill, are you here? Are you here, Quill? Quill. Quill. Hello. Yep, yeah, right still. behind you. Yep. Cool. What's up? D you, you, you cast from the skull, right? When you know that thing happened that we don't talk about. Um, I d yes. Do you remember anything from it? I mean, the scroll burnt up in front of us upon use. Uh, the mm -hmm. <laughs> and I couldn't recant the huge lengths of that scroll, even if I tried. It was very complicated. Like it was. This is like a seventh level spell, right? Like it was all sorts of geometric patterns and arcane formulas and things like that. Even were I to ask my eye, I wouldn't have a vision long enough to note such a spell down. It's incredibly powerful. I'm not really surprised that its usage is lost. You, do, do you I, I believe that we once discussed yeah. purchasing the, the scroll. I know that you used to carry one. I'm sad to hear that you have used it. Uh... Mm. Don't be. It was mm. very important. Um, but... <laughs> Cool. Do you have an image of it in your mind? Like, if I maybe if I cast Dream on you, we could recreate it and 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 shape it. I don't know. Oh. It's it's been too long. Quill, unless Quill had like a thing which gave him like a super good memory. I know there's a feat which gives you like a photographic memory. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to argue. Uh, it's been like over a month. Yeah. You know, it's that the detail of it is gonna be so hard to replicate. Yeah. I, I, the only way I could visualize this. In, in pristine clarity is with the eye, but again, not long enough a vision at all to even be able to put that down onto another scroll in any way. There, it is likely that there are other scrolls. This sort of magic, it is why I offered you a, a prince, a handsome sum for the scroll. They exist. The great libraries of Solvin, whilst most of them are likely lost, Solvin traded many such secrets and arcane knowledge to other other provinces. There will be other scrolls. There may even be spell books of other great mages out, out there somewhere uh, that may contain such knowledge. But um, I'm afraid that uh, without it, I would not be able to craft you anymore. Any any spell or arcane formula of what we would call the seventh circle uh, or higher the eighth ninth circle such magics are extremely rare to come across um sentry we know that petal was sequestered away and um queen astoria was very powerful uh, a, a very powerful spellcaster do you think there's any merit in asking petal i don't want to kind of traumatize her I don't know how much she knows about the sequester. I remember from mm. the day it was used, it was like a flash. It was a sudden occurrence. I, I, I don't know how much of that Petal had known previously. I, she, I, Petal was very young when she was sequestered as well. She was, you know, like, what, eight, nine, I think, century? Yeah. Like, she was quite a young girl, so... I don't know how much she'd remember. Yeah, okay. Um, Lady Pearl, do you have anything that could help slow a curse? Slow a curse? Oh, interesting. Um, sequester, from what I know of the spell, places the person in some sort of suspended animation. I there are I have scrolls that can remove curses. If you haven't known if a curse must be removed, I, I know the knowledge to remove a curse. Uh, perhaps bestow a curse as well if that was uh, but that does not seem to be something that you are looking to do at this time removing a curse yes uh, if the curse is magical in nature and cannot be removed through some mundane means judging by the sort of endeavors that you find yourselves within i trust that this is no normal curse being the champions of Erois, I'm sure that whatever mundane curse could simply be removed by myself or many others you are likely dealing with something stronger it is possible that if somebody were to be placed in a, in a, if it is magical curse, perhaps if they were placed in some sort of anti-magic field, but again, we are talking about eighth circle magic here. We are talking about very powerful uh, materials. Um, I'm afraid I cannot think of anything, even with my great knowledge of uh, matters arcane. Arcane. Hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm out of ideas. Um, I'm, and I think we're probably out of time i'm sure i could think of something if we had more time but we we don't have time i'm saying the word time a lot 
well, I, I think the only way we can uh, help in any way is to literally slow down time, but uh, we don't have any control over that. Uh, the only thing we can do is, I mean, we, we know a way to the Feywild. We know how to get there straight away and fix this entire problem, hopefully sooner than the curse ends. Quill, when you said Feywild, you do see Azaria's Perel sort of eyes, kind of her eyebrows, kind of she just she reacts like she's trying to keep like a very sort of neutral, very composed facade. But there's a reaction when you say that, and you see she kind of looks in your right. Are you? Did I hear you correctly, Kila Kekla? Are you traveling to another realm? Uh, I, I mean, yes, yeah, we are, yeah, we are. <laughs> uh, it's a whole thing. That's where the curse. Would you consider? Is. Would you consider performing a small favor for me? What do you need us to recover? No, no, not at all. Uh, she reaches back into the kind of knapsack satchel bag and she pulls out like a thin uh, rod of a very shiny looking silver metal. Uh, my understanding is that the cradle around Aroas will not always be here. She hands you the rod. Simply take this with you. Uh, find a place of magical nature and wait for an hour or so with this rod uh, in your possession um and the return do i, do I recognize this rod in it's, any way or, or what it could be i mean do you you can make an arcana check sure you can make an arcana check for sure cool natural one eight <laughs> <laughs> i mean there's no critical fail but it's still a pretty rod i mean the you don't get the sense that this rod is magical. It looks like basically just a rod of metal. Um, maybe like mithril or adamantine or like some sort of rare metal um, or like high grade steel or high grade silver, something like that. Um, it's very light. Uh, it doesn't seem magical. You don't think it's like a magic wand or a rod or anything like that. Um, but apart from that, you have no idea. <laughs> it's, it's an odd request to be sure. Uh, I, 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 we can we can try. Uh, we're going to be against it the time limit, be... and of course, of course, but it should be. I'm sure that you will. The from what I have read of places such as Lunaria and the Feywild, it will be a place abundant in magic. Simply, perhaps having it on your person during your journey there will be sufficient. Uh, but there will there will be no need for you to go out of your way. Simply carry it upon your person, and I'm sure it will uh, be infused. I need it it's be. not gonna start ticking or glow in some radiance, make us very obvious, not gonna start screeching no. weird sounds. No, 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 it should not do any okay. of those things. The rod is just a simple rod. It is not a magical creation. Good. Good. In that case, sure. Thank you sure. very much. I'm <laughs> delighted at your uh, acquiescence to my request. Uh, and of course, I will continue my work on your, your very fascinating vessels, uh, the one that you brought from beyond the Astral Sea, and indeed your airship captain, uh, Elanasto. Uh, the work is progressing smoothly on them. Lucius just walks in, in a bathrobe, in a coffee cup at this point. Mm -hmm. Sorry, what was that? Never mind. Uh, work on your ship is going marvelously. I oh, wonderful. Say. What's happening? We are continuing the work. We believe that we may be able to have a, uh, a sort of working prototype of the uh, environmental shield. Which oh, will wonderful. Allow, it will allow the ship to exist in astral space. Uh, will it diminish its impeccable beauty that it already has? Will this shield so. just hide some of its more wondrous features? That's what I'm concerned about. No, it should not. The, the very reason, as I am sure your crew is, your crew is very used to fighting upon the vessel as it is. Yes. If I were to make it too enclosed, I had a feeling that they would find it difficult to fight. Instead, we have opted for this uh, a sort of magical shielding, a barrier that will keep out the more dangerous elements of the astral space, um, but will allow them to continue to use it and fight with it as, as they have been trained to. Phenomenal. This may make you more vulnerable to certain effects in the astral space, but uh, I believe that uh, it should offer some protection from those matters. Of which we have come across much in our time on the storm, ch storm chases, so uh, yeah. yes, very useful. Thank you. You're most welcome. It has been a fascinating challenge. I still would very much, and she looks at Sentry, I still very greatly require uh, a moment of time to 
examine that most wonderful relic you carry with you, Sentinel Prime. And she's looking at the Matrix like, perhaps when there is time after your journey to the Feywild, uh, I can steal you away for a few days. Uh, yeah, may maybe, maybe. <laughs> yes, of course, you're very busy, of course, of course. Yeah, really busy. Very well. Yeah. Well, good luck in your endeavors. And she just sort of leaves. <laughs> Wait, do I need to bring back the rod? Yes, yes, please okay. bring it back and okay. return it to me. All right. Thank you. I'll keep it safe. I will see you soon, um, Storm Chasers. <laughs> just glides away, drifts oh, off. Strange vibes. Creepy. Yes. Very, very creepy. Um, yeah. Lucia's okay. Robe. Your, ro what? Close the. Ro the yeah, the I can see it from breeze. here. But then I can see. Mm. Oh, well, don't look then! And he, he storms off <laughs> and tightens <laughs> <Okay>. the belt. <laughs> shall we? <laughs> shall we think about gathering everyone ready to leave? Uh, all we need to do is get Rose Meadow, um, Thalia, obviously, uh, the crew, obviously, Kyrie, Big Cat. They'll, they'll be useful. They were in the vision. How many? How many people can can teleport with us? Uh, enough. <laughs> enough. One, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight. Eight? Plenty. Eight. Eight. Plenty. Enough. That's okay. that's the perfect amount. Uh, With Rose Meadow, that's nine. It is. Sentry, Quill, Ayla, Lucius, Nova, Rose Meadow, Thalia, Big Cat, Kyrie. Nine. Um, what, what, I mean, what if we end up bringing somebody back? Like, what if there's some kind of what if there's someone who's running from the Valkyrian Empire who needs to come back to Aroes or something? Should we account for something like that happening? I'm just putting it out there. You never know. Uh, well, mm. True. I mean, I the, the eye hasn't lied so far, and I saw the book. Which, while yes, is you know casting a version of the spell that we do know, was able to carry more people. So maybe this book is an outlier I mean, in that regard. I mean, the fact is, is the book can get past some of the restrictions on plane shift anyway, because it allows you to bypass the cradle. So it's the book can definitely do things that the spell can't. Um, uh, may, will it always do? I don't know. Maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See what I said at the beginning of this stream? Lies book of secrets and, and lies. Secrets mm -hmm. and lies. No, you said mm -hmm. book of secrets and lies. <laughs> no, I'm I'm putting all the whole pin this together. This book comes at like, a cost. Right. Look, this book look, comes at a cost. It, the, the, look, my book is not a book of secrets and lies. It is a book of cool Joy. shit and doodles. <laughs> <laughs> you need to doodles stop in doodling. it? <laughs> I, You've written it? I've, I've added things. I mean, there's uh, all the previous owners of this book has added their own amendments and things, and I feel like I need to make my mark as a current what owner of the book. What did you say? I, no, I be honest, not much so far. Just this looks good on certain things. Uh, I circled, circled the the story that it showed me. Important. I wrote important on that. Uh, Maybe over time, I'll have much more sage wisdom to add to the book. Right now, though, I've only just got it. It's no I barely pressure, know what it Quill. Does. Yeah, in, in your own time. Yes, when the words come to you, you don't feel the need to just put whatever in there. Anyway. Like, but let me know, because I'd like to there. read it. Uh, there's a lot of pages, uh, an infinite amount of pages, bigger than even this tome can hold. So, good luck. I have a quick I, I interjection. Want, I here, mm. uh -huh. if I may. Have we let Rose Meadow know that she is pivotal uh, to this teleportation to the Fae ever since our first discussion with her? We said we might be back. And I think since then we've kind of left her high and dry whilst trying to chase the Summer Eladrin in, in prison. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's go find her oh, now. Yeah, I think that's we... uh, also... You know, she's going to be jo joining us on this journey to a place that she doesn't even know she's in any way connected to. Um, mm. Might be scary. To. So we should go do find tell... Rose Meadow. Do we tell the Summer Eladrin that he's not coming? Should we? What did... 
What did you guys promise to this summer Aladdin? You didn't really tell me much <laughs> of what happened. There was a whole we contract made, thing that he we wanted. Made no promises. We made no promises. We made no promises. He is a but prisoner of ours. As as a servant of Callus. I, I think he's a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> There was a contract, though. You signed a contract with him. I, there was a potential for a contract. I, they were, it was never drafted up. It was never signed by anyone. Okay. Okay. That was just an option on the table. Uh, there was, the however, his pit. on observing really the discussion. You, yes. Mm. yes, but that was uh, unnecessary information. Uh, <laughs> what's important is what. Quill was saying to the Summer Legend and the fact that I said absolutely nothing and that there was no real resolution there. Maybe the Summer Legend deserves to know that it's not happening, perhaps. Even if by proxy. I mean, not what's me. the plan? We not just... me, I'm not saying it. I am not saying it. I'm not peeking over his hole just to say deals off and then leaving. But you said it. You said it, Quill. Your fault. I said nothing. I said there was a potential for a deal. He shouldn't be have expected. Uh, no. <laughs> Come on, Quill. No. Don't turn Sentry your beak away from me. I am enforcing the rule of the roles of the ship. Uh, morale officer. Be morale. I supersede as captain. As, as someone no, who. What? As someone oh, who does then make, I quit. Uh, as someone who you does not take promises me. lightly, <laughs> I would talk. say that. I think it's in the, the Aladrin's best interest that we should inform them that of, Quite of right. our situation. Yes, and who would you, as morale officer, deem mm. uh, the appropriate person to deliver such a message? Hmm. If it's a tough message, why not send Ayla? We could send Ayla, Ayla, a total third party to the entire situation, neutral to some mm -hmm. degree, and nope, would just deliver care. it uh, in a non-emotional way. Yes, non-emotional. Sure. Yeah. Just That's don't what beat I do. them up. Don't well, them no, up. they're in a hole, right? I remember that. Yeah, you don't need to go hole. down there. Don't need yeah. to go down there. Yeah, it's fine. I'll do it. Good. Lucius, why, why are you <laughs> blushing? I'm Lucius, not blushing. blushing. It's just the bathrobe. It hmm. It's I've had a warm shower and I'm in my. Anyway, off you go, Ayla. <laughs> All right, I'm just going on my own. You're not coming with me to like. Okay. I think it would be worse if I went. All right. Okay. Ayla leaves. Quill can go. Like <laughs> an hour. What? <laughs> Comes back. How'd it go? Yeah, he was pretty pissed. Uh, he, uh, <laughs> he had that like he had the mask, the gag thing, so he couldn't talk. But I leaned over the hole and I said, "Oi, hey, flame guy, mm -hmm. you're not coming. Mm -hmm. Deals off later." And then I left. Wow. Yeah. I, 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 yeah, I mean, that's what Expertly I was hoping. Handled. I would have broken instantly. Oh yeah, he looked mad. Uh, and then I think he was getting sad because it got cold in there or something. Oh. oh, that makes me feel really bad. It's all right. Uh, remember, remember what he's he an did. Asshole. Yeah, he, he tried to enslave starving. an entire town with, granted, a True. power he didn't even know he had, but he did try and enslave an entire town with his mind magic. Oh, but you know I can't handle sadness. Oh, um, ha happy, happy time! We're going to the Fey with Rose yeah. Meadow. Phenomenal fae, adventure journey, and we have and I've numbers. heard what Lucius looked and sounded like, and I i mean, I'd love to see more creatures like that. Um, but speaking of, I mean, you had for, for a time some small connection. Anything we should know? If there's any sort of crown made out of flowers, I should probably take it on board myself, because with I, the I, most experience... I'm not touching it. Um, it, it, it. I think that I could handle it. Um, but none of you do it because it's a curse ultimately and it won't come off. Right. But if anyone okay, has right. to take that burden, once again, I'll do it for the sake of the team. You're so strong. I know. Okay. Okay. Sure. Uh, <laughs> nothing else. Just avoid uh, thorny crowns. Not thorny, sure. just flowery. Oh, flowery crowns. Nice. Pretty. 
keep an eye out for right. Valkyrians. I, I know oh, nothing yeah. of the Fae. It's Valkyrian territory. When I had that on my head, I, I merely adopted a persona. I had no history or knowledge of where it came from or the environment in which it would usually reside. So uh, we're going into the unknown territory here. Okay. I just wondered if uh, the effects it had on you or any new powers that you may have gained with this, uh, we could understand better what we could expect from the regular creatures of the Feywild. A, a certain sense of whimsy and nonchalantness, mm. right. uh, non-committal, um, mm. that sort of thing. Strange, vibrant, overwhelming. Okay, okay. I mean, I'm guessing if we're sort of on the subject of Summer Eladrin, surely is a perfect example. Well, all the all the Eladrin that we fought recently, um, you know, they, they were all quite passionate, weren't they? Passionate, yes, Very that's loud, a good word. Very loud, shouty. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that's a good Fighting. point, actually. They also have no idea of the power they possess, because, I mean, I imagine if they are surrounded by themselves this entire time, they wouldn't understand that they have any powers, but they have some way of uh, warping minds uh, and trying to charm you in some way. So avoid that. Right. Uh, One of them made me dance a lot. I didn't like it. There was yes. some dancing. Uh, okay. Uh, if Charming anyone starts effects. dancing, yes. or dancing, or Make skipping. me not dance. It was really Don't hard. Dance. Okay. That if even circumvented that. Uh, Ayla's natural resistance to such effects as well. So the Fae works in mysterious ways. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's not because I'm dumb. Mm, I never right. suggested such a thing. No, I know you didn't. I'd beat you up. I know. Yeah. I'm going to go change into some armor. <laughs> Good. In that yes. case, let's yes. let's also go get Rose Meadow and uh, prepare her for this in some way, if we can. Her huh? returning home. Maybe in a way, yes. home she didn't even know she had. Mm. Yeah. Or necessarily needed. Fingers crossed. Yeah, right. you guys right. managed to... You get your armor on. Uh, it doesn't take long. You guys, there's no no immediate threat, so you can head down to the market area on the mid tier where you know Rose Meadow has a little stall. Um, you find her there. She's just uh, you know dealing with some customers. She sells a couple of little wicker baskets full of little glass lotion bottles and soaps and uh, I don't know what other kind of things. Crystals, uh, a crystal. Um, and yeah, she sends those off packing, and then she sees everyone. Oh my friends, you've come to see me. Rose Meadow, hello. Uh, How hang are you on, doing? Let me lift, I'll lift my arms up now. Yay! And she kind of scoops in. She was kind of <laughs> waiting. She wasn't like running over to you. But when you lift your arms up, she kind of like lights up and she's like, ah, and like picks you uh, up and like squeeze and hugs you close. Okay. <laughs> my favorite um, little birdie. Mm. And then she puts you down. Whoa, whoa. She gives hugs. She comes around and gives a hug to everybody. Um, Ayla does that yeah. awkward like at a distance thing, like pats her on the shoulder. But like, yeah, Half she comes over to Sentry and like, yeah. <laughs> She comes over to Sentry yeah, and properly like gives Sentry a hug and like Nova she probably picks up as well like Quill she like just lifts you off the ground. Uh, Sent Rose Meadow is actually quite strong like she's not Sentry and Ayla strong but she's strong like she's stronger than Lucius strong um, and she like gives Lucius a hug as well and like uh, yeah. Ugh. Rose Meadow good to see you. you yeah. Ready? How have you? I can tell that you've been using my products on your hair, Lucius. It's looking extremely silky and glossy. Thank you healthy. for noticing. And I course, glance at everyone else. I noticed, I noticed, it just, <laughs> I mean, obviously, I noticed. So sparkly, and she's, like, running her hair, her hands through, like, Lucius's hair, and it's, no, like, kind of No, not whatsoever. You can just run your fingers through it Beautiful. all day. Yeah. Thank you for that. It's a wonderful remedy. Of course, of course. It's what anyway, I do. Anyway, Quill, would you like to deliver the wonderful news to Rosemary? <gasps> news? Yes. Wonderful news. Uh, we've made progress in our... It's your birthday! No. No. Oh, oh you didn't Sorry, tell us, Quill. Happy birthday. Birthday. Happy birthday! Happy birthday, Quill! Oh, I didn't know! I should have got something. Happy birthday to you. Birthday. you. It's not my birthday. Special birthday. Bur <laughs> it's, not, it's not? It's not my birthday. Why did you make us all think it was your birthday? I did. I'm sorry. Book of I'm Lies, so sorry. once again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, we have good, different news. Different news. Okay. It's okay, Lucius's sorry. birthday. No, it's not. Uh, what? <laughs> oh, happy birthday! We should throw me a party. <laughs> I, I do you a present. 
Right. We we have made progress in our <laughs> have adventures. Have we? <laughs> we have made progress in our adventures Apparently. into the Feywild. And, and, uh -huh. and we, we believe that you are actually uh, in some way pivotal in our teleportation to the Feywild. Um, you may not know it, but you have a very strong connection to. She's it. gone. She's not. She's, she's not. She's just focused. like looking. She's staring at you, blinking. You rec like like she understood you, us. Like like a lot of the things you said have just. As soon as you said pivotal, gone. it's, it's okay. gone. It was like I mean, teleportation. I like, I can see that. like it, that's all like. Okay. I'll, I'll, uh -huh. Let me let me let me try. Let me start again. Uh, okay. We're going to the Feywild, and uh -huh. we believe that, that you. Yeah, it's um, I've, we've done this before. It's a, it's a. Uh, That's right. Far away. It, it's a place. It's not here, but it's uh, but you think it's where I'm from, but it's not in Eroes. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, okay. And, and it's it's far away, and the only way that we can get there is with this book. Uh huh. Uh, I just okay. need to uh, re read a story, and we will be uh, transported there in, in our imaginations and. Oh, I love away. these games. And, we, and, I, and, sit, I used to play these kind of games sometimes with some friends in Kaylee's Res. We would all sit around and one of us would have a book and we would play these imagination games. And then sometimes we would have to roll these little dice and move these little figures around. It was very right. wholesome. But, uh, hang on, so what, but why? Okay. So who were you? Were you just Rose Meadow? <laughs> no, I was I was a I was a little baker lady and and it was it was you had to run a little business and you would meet people and you would make friends with the villagers and uh you had to roll to see how good that you know you were at making friends and how good at baking you were it was very it was super fun. Right. Roll to make that sounds friends. amazing. That sounds That's terrible. We should all sit down and play that. Lovely. Yeah. No. yeah. Back from the oh fate. my god, yeah, we should. Mm. There's the big um, table in Horizon in the big meeting room. We can all That's right. We'll clear that off. And, yeah, clear it all off. We uh -huh. cannot do a D and D in D and D one shot. <laughs> we yes, we can. Yes, can you we shut can. this down right now, Tom? You shut this down right now. Is that what's happening? Can we go? Although now that I've said it, I really want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay um we'll, we'll think it about it but but but, but we need we need your help uh, uh um uh writing this this story and uh all uh -huh. you need to do is press your hand uh, oh, wait to, wait well not yet not yet not yet yes but uh big cat she Talia. was like literally reaching towards the book and then you're like whoa whoa, whoa and then like i'm ushering oh, um, not now okay everyone in like into a ring yeah, okay, well, like, Nova person. will need to go get Thalia. I'm assuming that Thalia yeah, is still Yeah, I've got to get my girlfriend. Go get her, go yeah. quick. The whole reason she could going. touch the book at any moment. She's very excited <laughs> okay. now. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's so pretty. I love all these gemstones. She's, like, looking at them, like... However, oh. uh, you should know that uh, that in, in doing this, you, you will be coming with us uh, to, to this place. Okay. And, uh, it'll be yeah, in our imaginations. Uh, well, kind uh, sort of. Uh, it's real. Um... Okay, yeah, it's it's real. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it's, it. You get it. But, <laughs> but there will be we'll, we'll we'll see brand new things that none of uh -huh. us uh, are used to. However, you may yeah. you may know them better than us. Uh, uh huh. Is 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 one way of. Well, I've played the game before, <laughs> silly. Of course, I know them better than you. <laughs> um, okay. Just got an answer for everything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but but when we get in there, uh, this isn't yeah. a, a game. Player, just be careful. No, stay with us. That's right. It's not a game. You have to play it like you're really there. That's it. You've got it, Birdie. I just, there's a whole world to explore, and you do that. It, it, okay, <laughs> fine. <laughs> when we get Dahlia, Big Cat, Kyrie, I don't know if you've met them yet. Uh, but be careful. No, with they Kyrie. sound wonderful. Kyrie is Big is Cat a big cat? A huge cat. <gasps> oh, I love cats. <laughs> uh, really big cat. Uh, it doesn't um, maybe a little bitey, so be careful. And Kyrie is not too dissimilar well, to me. Cats love me. No, it's fine. They'll love cat. All animals love me. Uh, Kyrie is very nervous, so so please oh, be okay. careful around Kyrie. Yeah, um, I know that shy people. I'm very good with shy people too. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. And and when they arrive again, we just need you to touch the book, and we'll be whisked away. Into our uh -huh. not imaginations and uh, and and that's and right into a whole new world. Uh, yeah, in a whole new world. Uh -huh. Oh my god, I'm having a panic attack. <laughs> Wait, right. 
Uh, so Nova, <laughs> when you 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 yeah. get to the twin star longbow and like kind of coming out of it, um, you overhear Thalia talking, uh, and uh, you overhear like as you're approaching, you just hear Thalia like, Kyrie, you and Big Cat should stay here. Like, the, you, there's no reason for you to come with us. Like, you know it's going to be dangerous. I we there might be Valkyrian forces, uh, Mesmera. Who knows what Mesmera's done? I don't want I don't want either of you to get hurt. Uh, and you just hear like a very sort of like. Oh, we we want to come like like the Kyrie desperately trying to sort of like argue back about it, and you hear like a <laughs> kind of grumbling from Big Cat. Um, no, I'm putting my foot down on this. Neither of you should come. It's too dangerous. I think that's probably a little bit unfair. I mean, they've been with you all across the universe through thick and thin, and now now is the point at which you're going to say that they need to stay home. She like turns around to you and has that sort of like. <laughs> like annoyed partner kind of like that's different i don't know what's going to happen there i don't know what mesmer has done i don't know i don't and she looks at you and you can actually see in thalia there's pleading eyes uh and she kind of mouths to you like i'm ashamed like like she mouths that to you so that Kyrie and Kyrie doesn't know what she said um I'm gonna try and mouth back. Do they uh -huh. know? Uh okay. Yeah, sure. I think that like you managed to mouth that and then Kyrie's just like, um, I, I don't I don't care, Thalia, like whatever I don't care how dangerous it is. We we need to come with you. And Big Cat's like like shove like literally like body slamming Thalia's thigh with his giant body and she's like struggling to keep her balance and she just shakes her head at you and she's like, I know, and that's that's very sweet. But you'll be safe here on Horizon. Like, we know that there are people, there are guards here, and you'll be safe. And I just... It, this I, this is something I have to do, and I don't know if I'll even be able to protect you. We will, though. We're all going. And I know the Storm Chasers, and you know the Storm Chasers. They'll make sure that Kyrie and Big Cat are safe, no matter what. And... I mean, maybe now is the time to be honest. Okay. Thalia kind of looks at you for a long time. I'll she hold her hand. I'll go up to her and hold her hand. Okay. Yeah, she, like, takes your hand. She looks back to Kairi. Kairi with these, like, big wings, and she's kind of got them, like, wrapped around herself like she always does, like, kind of, you know, nervously. And, uh... Thalia looks at Big Cat, and you know, you you've you've known that Big Cat can understand people. Like he he can understand speech. He just can't speak it back. Um, he's intelligent to that degree. Like he he can actually kind of process thoughts and stuff um, in a pretty clever way. And uh, Thalia turns to them both and says, "Okay, all right. Before you make this decision, then you should know exactly why we're going, and you should know all about me, because I don't think you'll want to come with me once you once you know." And to save time, uh, Thalia basically spends mo like she explains everything to Kyrie and Big Cat. She talks about Mesmera. She talks about the things she did. Um, she doesn't make it as gruesomely detailed as you experienced, Nova, but she doesn't hold back. Like she does, kind of go through a, you know a bunch of the things she did to Mesmera. She talks about the petrification of her own family, like how she ran away. She even goes into a little bit of stuff that you didn't know which is how she was when she first left Lunaria in the Feywild and she was out in space. And she was basically like a kind of bandit queen. Like she would go around and like bully and, and you know, use people and abandon them and stuff like that. And it takes, you know, she probably spends a good sort of like 30, 40 minutes kind of going through all of this. And uh, and then, you know, Kyrie is listening, Big Cat's listening. And just at the end of it, they just, Kyrie probably turns around and says, I still want to go. There you have it. Okay. All right. Thalia reaches out her other hand. She's holding your hand in one. Takes Kyrie's in the other. And then Big Cat kind of scoops in between everyone's arms. You guys make your way out and towards Horizon. Uh, towards the others who have had to entertain Rosemeadow for a good 30 minutes. I'm like uh, looking at, at a piece of paper. <laughs> I'm looking uh -huh. at a piece of paper and I'm like, I, so this is a this is your baker. This is uh -huh. everything that makes it up. Yeah. All these that's Betty numbers. Beeswax. That was my that was my baker. Betty and, Beeswax. Um, okay. 
there was somebody who played a blacksmith and there was somebody who played a carpenter and our village was uh called <laughs> stardew stardew <laughs> valley <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's, there, I don't, I, I can't uh -huh. make any sense of all these numbers, and there's pencil marks. Oh, all well, the over numbers the are place. how good you are at certain things. So I had, I had an 18 in friendship, which meant I was very good oh, at making right. friends and like talking to my friends and that sort of thing. But, um, but, but you've, say, you've, you've written so much stuff down and scratched so much stuff out. I, yeah. There must be an easier way. This is beyond me. No, this is the best way to play. <laughs> <laughs> no, there like, has how to can, be. You can do anything no else. Way. Terrible. <laughs> Terrible. Uh, but yeah, so that's been going on for like 30 minutes. And then, yeah, Nova uh, returns with Thalia, Kyrie, and Big Cat. Okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, Thalia, um, when, so when Rosemary and I hate talking, I hate NPCs talking to themselves. Um, but yeah. Thalia, Thalia's never met Rose Meadow, and when she sees Rose Meadow, like Nova, she like whispers, she's like, "She's a centaur." <laughs> How? Yes. She, I mean, she's from the Feywild. Like, there's no, she, she can't be from a Rose. Like, she, that is a, a native to the Feywild. How is she here? She has no memory of how or why she's here, and I'm really feeling like right now I should have introduced you to her sooner because we could have done with the whole she's from the Feywild a lot sooner and you being from the Feywild you would have recognized yeah, her a, a little, lot sooner a little I bit. should have just asked you yeah maybe we could have saved a maybe lot that time. might have okay. might have might have helped um but yeah we she were kind going of moves through up stuff. we were we were That's, going through yeah stuff. I get that I get yeah. that mm. and uh mm. so Rosemeadow seeing Thalia is just like you must be Nova and, and and the other's friends hello and like she goes over and she's like yes. I'm a hugger and she like wraps her hands around um and she hugs oh, Thalia God. but she Thalia just is like yes lovely to meet you and she kind of like pats her on the back not quite as bad as Ayla did but not like you know you know century level hug um, but then when she she turns and she just looks at Kyrie and she goes, hello, and she just offers a hand. She doesn't go to hug her or anything. And Kyrie's like hiding behind Thalia and she just is like little kind of clawed winged hand like, hello. And she kind of waves back. <laughs> um, Big Cat is kind of nervous at first. And then you see Rosemary just like holding her cheeks, just like, oh, he's a big cat. And uh, big, big cat. he kind of sniffs. You're going to have to let her hug you. He looks up at Nova. He looks at Rose Meadow. And he kind of pod, he plods over to her and he's like sniffing Rose Meadow. And then he just, you start hearing a noise that he only makes when he's with Thalia and he starts purring. Like you hear this big, heavy kind of like. And Rose Meadow's like scratching his ears My and like ears. stroking his mane and stuff like that. And uh, and she's like, I told you, animals love me. And she's like stroking him and stuff. Oh, his coat's so glossy. Do you, do you give him special food? And Thalia's like, uh, 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 he, uh, okay, uh, no, no, no. He eats whatever I eat, really anything. He eats anything. He eats trash most of the time. And uh, she has that uh, effect on people and animals. Uh, it turns out. Um, Wait. Thalia leans in. Quill, where where did you meet this woman? Like this, there's something there's something about her. Uh, yeah, we met her in Callie's Rest, and to be honest, we should have uh, noted down the strangeness of uh, seeing a centaur in Aroes way back then, but we didn't. <laughs> um, no, not just that, but uh, there's yeah, there's something there's something here. Like I think. I don't know, but this is very strange. Big Cat isn't like this with anybody. Like, not at first. Like, when he gets to know them, sure. But, like, this is unusual. No, he, he pounced like on me. With you straight away? Yeah. No, Big... Away. Are you kidding? Big Cat tried to kill me when we first met. He, he tried to... He tried to maul me. We he ended up getting injured in a in a in a gunfight. Uh, he was he was being kept on a by a an asshole of a space bandit. Uh, he was being kept as like a, a an attack dog, and uh, I shot him. My big cat tried to pounce at me, and I shot him. And then when we were, when I was getting out of there, he was injured on the floor, and I I took him with me, and I patched him up. Wow, that's a beautiful friendship. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of how it works with me most of the time. Mm, uh, but, uh, yeah. yeah. 
Uh, well, if well, you've, if you've, yeah, I mean, I don't know how you're planning, but this, it's very, this is very auspicious, I think. Well, luckily, uh, Rose Meadow um, contains within her some way of actually getting us to the Feywild, and um, I, I, hopefully, the book will uh, allow us travel back. It should do. I don't see why not. Um, well. But if everyone is prepared and ready and able to form a circle, uh, sure. Rose Meadow just needs to potion. place her hand on one of these gems and we'll be good to go. Sentry, are you good? I'm good, yes. Nine, nine potions, yes. Nine? Yes. Really? Yeah. How have you... Did we... I've been They're not all healing potions. Some of them no. are like resistance potions and stuff, yeah. I think I'm well stocked. Whatever happens. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like it. Okay, uh, everyone ready? Everyone fully rested, ready to go. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. In that case, Should I touch the book now? We're going to play the game? Uh, everyone link hands and, uh, okay, now, right, let's, this gem right here, this unlit one, place your hand on that. Okay. She reaches out and she goes to touch that one, Quill. But her hand is pulled to a green gemstone, uh, a different one. It's like oh, her right. hand is yanked towards it, and she touches it. And when she does, there is this sound of glass, like a mirror breaking. You hear like the shattering of glass, and energy all around Rose Meadow begins to distill, almost like the air around her turns to little puff particles or petals. And they begin being sucked into the gemstone. And you, Rose Meadow, like, she's like, I did it wrong. And she, like, backs away, like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And she's, like, backing away, like, pulling her hands away from the book. Um, but the the petals and the leaves and the, the air is kind of sucked in. And the gem turns, it begins to glow as if it has a charge. Um, uh, no, wait, I, I think you've done exactly what we wanted. Uh, I was expecting us to... Well, uh, disappear straight away, but I, I, I think I think that's done it. I think we can just go. It's just a question of, do you want to come with us? She's just. It's like I, I don't, I don't know. But I, I, I can you, can you get back? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, we can. I, this is all a little beyond me. We can get back. We can as long as we use the book again. Uh, it will take us back here. Uh, well, not too far from here, but back to Horizon. Um, we can get back here. And you said that you think that this is where I'm from? We believe so. In some way. Okay. Oh, I think I'd like to see it. And she kind of like looks at you. She, you can see like she's scared. Like she looks quite terrified. Well, look, we, we, we're all here. Uh, we're all seeing this for the first time. Mm. Uh, it will be weird. There'll be things that we are definitely not used to. Uh, but I think with all of us, with all of our assistants and maybe some uh some some strange way you'll have a way to guide us through it um but we'll keep you safe mm -hmm. through it all okay and we can come back whenever we want I yeah i think she would probably like she she would like stand next to you quill and like or like sentry you and sentry and she like holds your hands like she's like holding on to you and you can feel her like trembling like like something whatever just happened is like really she's like looking around and looks a little bit confused and scared, like she's looking around at Horizon and just looks a little bit unnerved, basically. I think Sentry okay, well, will look to Rose Meadow and like hold her hand and say, it, it might be dangerous, Rose Meadow. I don't know, but we will keep you safe. Okay. okay. She just sort of like, ho like holds you close, Sentry, when you say that, sort of like, kind of like hugging your arm. Yeah. Okay. Is there, uh, in that case, uh, Lucius, this time hold your breath so you don't throw up, and I'll press the button. <laughs> press the gemstone. It's interesting, Quill. It, for everybody, the multicolored column of light, the Bifrost effect, basically, descends upon you where you've all experienced travel via the Wayfinder's Guide before. Um, you feel yourselves lifted, physically lifted out of horizon at a rapid pace. Uh, multicolored light streaming all around you in a vast thing, but Quill... For the first time, you hear something. You hear a voice, familiar voice, uh, as the light is transported you up. Uh, you hear Hesper. Hello. 
you just hear it's a very faint whispered voice uh, like a message left in a bottle or like a message left in a letter to be found uh, it just says the wayfinder brings lost things home <laughs> Uh, and we'll take our break here before you <laughs> arrive. What? Oh, oh yeah, it's God, break time. so long. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't realize it's I, I, I gotta give myself a second. There's too much, too much emotion. I gotta, gotta press it all it's down. It's really building up there. Press it down. <laughs> yeah, it was. Shut yeah. it down. I can't. I don't know why. I don't know why. It's not. It's just like playing emotional NPCs makes me emotional, and I don't know really know why it does that. Well, it's healthy help to it. just, just bottle it up. Yeah, that's it. That's what I need to do. <laughs> I need to just cram it in there and stick yeah, a cork yeah. in it all. There you go. That's uh, a very message healthy. from the high rollers. That's not, it up. It's not, uh, that's some not. Some of the high rollers. <laughs> yeah. So, some of us. Other high some rollers. Some of us definitely yeah. don't have that Crying. problem. Crying all the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, Amazing. Yeah. Well, in that case, when we come back, we'll be in the Feywild, baby. Yeah. Yeah, we'll Hell see yeah. how this all goes. There. Yeah. You got there. Uh, <laughs> I love the realization of like, Thalia and Rosemano have never met, have they? And I was like, no, they have not. <laughs> um, <laughs> should have asked have solved her, a lot the Feywild stuff. princess. What kind I mean, of stuff do you get in the Feywild? Yeah. Well, yeah. Or like just, Idiot. hey, here's Rosemano. Like Holy shit, that's a centaur. That's do from you, the Feywild. <laughs> do you get grass in the Feywild? I don't know. Yeah. But yeah. Almost <laughs> yeah. definitely. Yeah. Um, oh, I didn't ask what the name of the game was that, that Rose Meadow plays. No, you didn't. It should no, be time to I, make one up. Boulders and Bakers. I was, I, <laughs> I, I was thinking of something, something and Bakers, or like, uh, you know, um, what was it? Professions and something, or like Profits. I was thinking Professions, professions and, and Profits. profits. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, like and it's, uh, it's, it's more of a Animal Crossing Stardew Valley than it is a Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, oh wow. Oh, now you have to make that. Oh. Now you have to make that. It's no, I don't. Yeah. I absolutely fucking don't. So, I yeah. want a Rose Meadow run. Uh, profits and one shot. I've already forgotten the name of it. <laughs> profits. <laughs> it's profits, quite a profits word and profession. Stumbler, that one. I quite yeah. like Holly Dragon in chat. Also suggests butchers, bakers, candlestick makers. <laughs> like that. That's really good. Yeah. Butchers, bakers, candlestick makers. That it's just right all again? jobs. <laughs> Might maybe. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I like that. Bandits um, and Bakers yeah. is another good one. <laughs> bread and, bread and breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> bread and breakfast. <laughs> but yeah. B &B, maybe. Yeah. Maybe that can be um, our Jingle Jam one shot this year is Rose Meadow runs mm. uh, a, a. And we in, all have to in make universe our game. Yeah. 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 The meta. Oh my God. But you're yeah. but you're playing your Eroist characters playing another character. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We should, we should oh pull out of Rose Meadow's game now and again so that the. Our characters can discuss what's we going on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, what is happening. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. So good. And then we pull Will, out of that, so that character. we in real life discuss, are like, oh my god, yeah. this is too meta. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. I think I think the, jing the jingle jam one shot could be a good way to do that because we can also have like people donate for like silly stuff to happen yes. and things like that. Like yeah, yeah. Oh, that'd that. be a great idea. Maybe I'll uh, I'll see if I can get a rose meadow costume and that could be like a, a goal that I'll I'll get. I thought you were dressing up as that for Halloween. Maybe I am. Maybe it's all just to throw people off for next week's oh. Halloween special where we're That's gonna right. be dressing up. Um but yeah. Yes we are. Yes right. we yeah. are. I think yeah. I think I know me, Kim and Re are doing M Eroes NPCs, I think, right? I'm like not. you're not, not, sorry, you were planning yeah, to, but you're I'm not a now. That's right. You're yeah. a disaster. <laughs> I don't know what Trot is doing. I've a s I have an idea about what Tom's doing. I know what Katie's doing, but like Rhiannon is a I complete have an idea about Trot. Nine. Because he showed mm. us something recently. Oh, did he? Mm. I didn't see. Mm. Well, we'll all see it next Sunday. Next week. Yeah. Uh, on uh, Halloween night. A spooky, cool. scary Halloween night. When I, yeah. Dracula, decided to invite all of my spooky friends who were there in a flash. It was a... Uh, anyway. Uh, I'm going to jump into some... <laughs> I'm going to do some donations and read your lovely messages. But before... Uh, I do that. I wanted to mention uh, our Patreon. Uh, if you want to support High Rollers in a more 
a continuous way, and also get early access to podcast episodes, the Thursday episode released on a Monday instead, then the Patreon is the place to go. And it will be very, very helpful for us because uh, we are looking yes. at studio spaces. <laughs> yeah, and that's actually a big um, one. So like at the moment, the Patreon is is like a huge one. If you'd like to see us playing in person again, the more patrons we have, the easier that's going to be because uh, yes. that that is going to yeah. basically be the main funding for that. So, uh, yeah, the idea is to use patron funding to improve the show in as many ways as we can, and we did that in one way with these uh, these microphones that almost everyone mm -hmm. has, and they are very good and hopefully have made a big impact on the show. Um, mm. But we would like okay. to play in person. Um, yep. Is the other a thing, big one. and that if you want to uh, help us in any way, patron is the way. Also, donating and subscribing as well, obviously. But mm -hmm. Patreon is the big boy. Patreon's a big um, boy. But uh, from a couple of weeks ago, we had a donation uh, from Viking Fungus. Fungus, sorry, Viking Fungus, which was $144 dollary dues. Uh, and they say, Driech from Glasgow. Driech? Driech? I, I, from Glasgow. Uh, first time donator and member of both the VOD and POD squads started watching High Rollers Lightfall in January and have finally caught up on a row. Welcome. What a ride it has been. Keep up the incredible work, you bunch of beautiful legends. Thank you very much. Um, what a generous donation. Brian Indigo also donated last week with um, Clear Skies. No song lyrics for y'all. Been joining the VOD squad as of late, getting certified as a teacher, ESL slash English. Amazing. Uh, racking my brain and taking up my free time hitting the books. So hit some evil for me. I'll try. I'll try. Uh, Mr. Altissimo with a half hundo. Holy cropoli, this was today. So we're up to date already. Uh, hello, everyone. Today is my 31st birthday. Happy birthday. And wanted to share some love with you all. Hope everything is going well uh, for you all and can't wait to see how this session rolls. Well, we're going to the Feywild. Uh, have, a, have a birthday party in the Feywild. Um, thank you very much, Mr. Altissimo. Boba Fetty Wap uh, has done it with Vod Goblin here. Wish I could watch live, but uh, haven't quite caught up yet. That is okay. Have to thank you all for getting me into this wonderful world of D&D. Take this measly amount of dollary dues as thanks, clear skies. Any amount is very much appreciated. Boba Fetty Wap, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> Elder, <laughs> Elder Dover, shut up. Elder Dover. <laughs> Has uh, donated with Hey High Rollers Gang. Stormy Skies for me. Uni has been stressful as of late. Wish I could donate, donate more to express my gratitude for all the entertainment you've provided us. You lot are amazing and have amazing chemistry as a group. Congrats on reaching 100k. Thank you very, Thank you much. very much, Elder Dover. Well. Sorry, Don't... it was just, I, I put my headphones on after getting back from getting a drink, and the, oh, the first thing I heard was, Thanks, Boba Fetty Web. <laughs> it just really got me. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh I hope I hope uni uh clears up stress wise for you, Elder Dover, and uh thank you very much for your donation as well. Thank you. Mr. Altissimo again with five dollar reduce, just wanted to send a bit more love also for Tom. I bought a Reynard pin. Thank you. Thank you. Uh S Whitcomb ninety three. Uh I love you guys so much. I listen to your shows at work on YouTube. First time donating and love to support this awesome what is that? Is that Quill? It is. Um, it is. There he is. I'm playing guess the character now. Um, love to support this awesome show. Wish there was more Chaos Twins on YouTube to watch Cloudy Skies with Rain in South Dakota. Thank you for the weather report from South Dakota. There it is. Live. Thanks. Live rain report. Um, yeah, Chaos Twins, eh, maybe. Uh, and S. Whitcomb again. Uh, my two and a half year old has loved watching you guys since she was born. Sorry about the language. <laughs> yeah, uh, that I is Nova. Bad. That's Nova. That's Nova. Um, she also helps us play our game on Sundays with my family, currently trying to learn about Tiamat and going to try and defeat her. Wish us luck. Uh, oh my God, a two year old playing Tiamat. That is amazing. Uh, <laughs> Legend N. Maxter, uh, just hypothetically, if you. Uh, sold the sequester scroll, you could have bought about 4 million chickens or 800 cows. That was Lucius. Uh, just wanted to throw that out there. Thank you very much. Lucius um, would be dead. Yep, Lucius would be dead. EL82 mm -hmm. with a half hundo, long time VOD squatter, uh, stars aligned to watch live this week. Welcome. Thanks for all the uh, fabulous adventures in the That's Quill again. 
No, it's Ayla. Damn it, oh, it's the quill feather. You got fucking wrecked. <laughs> that's the son. quill feather. That's not fair. That's um, very fair. That's Ayla again. Bam. Uh, I failed that one. Uh, <laughs> thanks for all the fabulous adventures in the magical world and for all the inspiration in playing and GMing my own games. Can't wait to see where it all goes next. Thank you very much. Uh, Half Hundo PL, thank you very much for that. Thank you very much. Ghost in progress with a quarter hundo. Uh, last Thursday was officially a year since I started watching High Rollers. Thanks, everyone, for a year of laughs, tears, and amazing community. And an amazing community. Yes, indeed. The community is Thank incredible. Incredible, in fact. Right, that. Do you want to get a break key? Is Sentry? Yeah, yeah, it was there, a bit of a cape. Nice. <laughs> there she go. There was a part of me that there thought that might go. be Araya, but nope. Or, or I was thinking Trot was trying to do you a bamboozle and put like Cam in or something like that. I was like, oh, oh god, yeah. Uh, don't put Reynard in on that. Can you imagine? Like... Can you imagine? <laughs> right. Do you need to uh, take a breaky, Tommy? Yeah, he's gonna go. Take he's a gonna break. Go rip a fat. He's gonna take a big fat vape and. Uh... Hell yeah. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> um, uh, from the Discord, thank you, mods, for collating some stuff for us in the Discord. Uh, the gift subs. I'll get to that in a minute, Kim. Uh, Being Wolfie, uh, Iron Robot, Crispy, Hot Coffee Junkie, Skyrim Witch, Jay Lee, and Blue Lads. Uh, Blue Lads. Thank you all very much for your gifty subs. Um, thank you for the bits, Trumpole, and MK13 Wolf. Uh, now, this may be a bit of a personal opinion, so don't overreact. That Pirelli lady is unsettling. Just don't, per just don't trust Pirelli. Had them tries on my car that didn't last. Had them tires <laughs> on my car. That's Pirelli tires. Of Pirelli yeah. tires. There you go. <laughs> wah, wah. Good joke. Nice. Um, then we had on Yogg's cast, uh, we had a donation from Ola Renve. No message. Thank you very much, Ola Renve. Always donates, but with no message. Appreciate all the support every every time. And then Zekanator720. Hey, Isaac here. I have spent so many hours uh, filling with you all, and life has not always been easy to live in. So when you play, I feel as though I can relax in small time. Um, but thanks thanks for making an impact. Happy 100,000. Well, thank you very much, Zekanator. Glad that we can give you a little bit of uh, something to look forward to each week. Um, and yeah, a couple of things. Uh, don't forget the pins next week. Oh, let's do that. No, let's do, <laughs> let's do pins first. Then we'll do the sponsor. Next week, you can buy the <laughs> Thalia and DM pin. Uh, they'll be available next week on our merch store. You can grab those uh, next week. Uh, they'll be available limited edition, so make sure you grab them if you want them. Um, and also, if you if you collected the pins, uh, definitely tweet us pictures. If you've got like all of the the pins so far and you've got them stuck on a jacket or a backpack, tweet us pictures. I want to see people with the collection. You know, especially if you've got every single one, I want to see that shit. Uh, so let us know. Uh, that's it for the pins. You can cut away from this disgusting mess. Uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I was talking about you what? and making your your shipping that you were doing. He um, made a kissy face. Yeah, not you. I wasn't calling you a disgusting mess. Um, Thanks. Thanks just for your that axe. clarification. That's all right. Uh, just my behavior. Yeah, that that is a disgusting <laughs> mess. <laughs> thank you very much to our sponsors. Privateer Press with their Iron Kingdoms 5e RPG books, Borderlands and Beyond, which is the best way to jump into the Iron Kingdoms as a setting, but using the most popular role-playing game in the world, 5th edition uh, of the, you know, it is the uh, it is the one that a lot of people play. You know the rules. If you watch High Rollers, you know how it works, but here's a whole new setting with brand new classes, brand new subclasses, brand new mm -hmm. spells. It's got magic punk robots. It's got gun mages. It's got crazy races and all sorts of stuff. Look at that Myrmidon. Look at that Haushail Light Myrmidon. Look at that Manticore. I love it so much. The mechs, the fantasy mechs. Ah! I love it. Uh, please go and check it out. Uh, use the link in chat. You can also check out D&D &D Beyond, who have sponsored us throughout all of uh, High Rollers, all of our second campaign uh, here in Arois. They've been amazing. We love D&D &D Beyond immensely. they got loads of cool stuff mm -hmm. coming up. Pre-order, Fizzband's Treasury of Dragons to unlock cool digital stuff uh, and supports and all that stuff. Marvelous. We'll check out B&B &B Beyond. <laughs> B and B beyond fuck's sake. I need to come up with something that's B and B. Like I feel like I have to do that now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that fits. Or P and P beyond. P and P beyond. P P P P P, 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 P beyond. <laughs> you want to play P P? Let's play P P. <laughs> right. Fucking. Let's get the childish <laughs> dumb shit out of the way. <laughs> yeah. Trot's just like no, no. That's a big. No. Let's not play with P P. 
Let's go play with PP. <laughs> don't, don't kink shame people, Chris Strong. If they want to play with PP, you let them play with PP. <laughs> it's a kink shame to not say don't play with your PP. <laughs> Well, that's all we've got time for today. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. <laughs> We're cancelled. I'm so sorry, Private Tier Press. I'm so sorry. I really like your product. I really do. I love it. Private Tier Press. Pl PP. I want to play. I want to play loads of fucking war machines. <laughs> We're idiots. We're idiots. Okay. We're sorry. Click the link. Right. Click the link. Mm. Click the link. Yep. Click the link. Click the link. Get away from this. Get Thank away you. from this disgusting mess. <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting. Right. Disgusting. Disgusting. It was one of you. Uh, right. Is everyone ready to get back to playing Dungeons and Dragons? We oui, we. Oui. I am ready to rock and then roll. Uh, oh, if oui. possible. Oh we. Oui. So. Oh, oui, monsieur. The multicolored light that surrounds you as you travel across astral space slowly begins to fade. The smell of hearty woodlands. The sound of wind blowing through trees and the soft, delicate touch of sunlight caresses your skin as your vision clears and you find yourselves in a new world. You appear to be stood in a clearing of wood. Uh, the trees seem as tall as the grandest spires of horizon and their thick branches are covered in leaves of luminous blue. The grass at your feet is a soft lilac Numerous flowers and shrubs grow in patches scattered across the ground with pink blossoms and soft green flowers sprouting out that all have a gentle ethereal glow to them. Wait, wait, wait. You said the grass was lilac? Yeah. And then there's green flowers? Uh, they're, they're pink and green sort of like shrubs and flowers and things like that. My mind is really struggling with that concept. <laughs> That's wild. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. And the tree the all the leaves okay, on the well. trees are, are like luminous blue. They're like they're like high saturation, near glowing blue. That's cool. Cool. Uh, okay, uh, Lucius, you can breathe out now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no words can describe what I'm seeing. Are you all seeing this? Are my I'm, eyes okay? I'm seeing it maybe in some kind of Usage of the book. I mean, we saw a lot of rainbow coming down here. Uh, this does not seem right, but then my eyes aren't adjusting. It's, there, the book broke me. It's spellbinding. It's beautiful, but it's so unnerving to see the colors. It's so vibrant. It's uh, certainly strange. Okay, before we do anything else, just stay still. I'm going to pop a divine sense. Just sentries in like defense mode. Mm -hmm. Big time right now. Yeah, sure. What kind of creatures does Divine Sense pick up on again? Um, anything affected by the Hallow spell or know the location of a Celestial Fiend or Undead. Celestial Fiend or Undead. Yeah. And you do not sense any of those types of creatures nearby. Okay. So there's no not Celestial the Fiends or Undead nearby. Yeah. Uh, okay, good. Uh, around here. Okay. Anything else? Any Valkyrian? Um, I can't see any. That you are you are in a thick woodland at the moment. Like you are like in the heart of a dense forest of crazy tall trees. Like you cannot see the sky. Like the trees are so tall and their canopy is so thick. You are, but it's not dark because all of these patches of these pink and green flowers are giving off this ever so slight faint glow and they're spread out throughout the entire wood so this whole area is like dimly lit you're almost like in a twilight where the sun hasn't fully set but it's low enough that it's kind of everything's quite um dusky you know it's kind of got this very strange blue pink blue glow I, I, I did say that uh, I, there's no way of controlling where the book was going to attune us. Uh, we could be anywhere in, in uh, the Feywild. So I think we just need to find some way of getting while, a location. While Quill, Sentry, and Lucius are having this moment, like Nova, you feel like Thalia just sort of collapsed to her knees. Um, and you're still holding her hand and she's still holding yours. But like she's just looking just tears fully in her eyes just like openly like tears just flowing down her face and she's like reaching out with a hand and she's like brushing her hand against the grass um 
and just like so is of... completely stunned silent like she's just completely absorbed in this world um i'll kneel down next to her and put her arm around her and um i'm just gonna let her cry for a little bit and then after a beat i'm just gonna look mm -hmm. at her and go so this is what grass is <laughs> she just laughs like you know it's kind of like a choking sob laugh uh, like <laughs> in part of this world yes yes there's some places which will be a bit more familiar to you but yeah yeah this is grass and she just sort of like smiles at you i think uh, i prefer the grass on your world than the grass on my world if i'm honest <laughs> definitely has a definitely has a unique look to it you can see the snakes by the way have like come out of her like trousers and her sleeves and they're like wriggling around in the lilac grass and like having a whale of a time uh rose meadow when you look back at rose meadow she's just like oh, that's so pretty <laughs> she's just like freaking out she starts like literally like prancing like a horse like doing that like excited like dancey walking that they do and like she's going over to the flowers and she's like picking them up and like smelling them and like just frolicking she's full-on frolic at this point uh, outside of all of that noise of frolicking, uh, mm -hmm. can I hear any? Well, well, what can I hear? Can I hear any like creatures? You definitely hear out like there or you, you? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely creatures. You can hear like birds. Um, you know, as you guys started speaking, there was probably like some you know movement from one of the trees, like a <laughs> like a bunch of birds got spooked and scared. Um, yeah, I mean, it sounds like a wood sounds like woods do right like you can occasionally hear like you know birds in the distance maybe some rustling in some of the the thick patches of shrubs further away and stuff like that and looking up like how tall are these trees i mean these are crazy tall like we are talking like hundreds of feet but these are mm. like as tall as the the tallest buildings in horizon tall so i mean what i was thinking was potentially flying up to uh, beyond the canopy of this thing you can to try, just see yeah. if It'll I can see you. anything. Yeah, you can try. Uh, I'm going to see if I can find out where we are uh, and maybe try and spot some settlement or something nearby, give us an idea of where we could go. Um, be careful. Be, I, I will. I, it doesn't, just, I'll it doesn't mean on this one. You could get shot out of the sky by Valkyrian ships. We don't know what's just beyond that canopy right there just be careful i mean this place is huge i'll have to be watching this exact spot for the moment that i jump out but uh I, i'll be careful um for the time being uh, maybe try and talk to rose meadow maybe there's some way that she could identify this place some innate understanding i don't know um uh, i look at her prancing around <laughs> uh oh like a little squirrel and like she's like like running around the perimeter like ah, ha, ha, ha. uh have to try tonight. <laughs> can Go on i over. turn to thalia and just be like do you recognize where we are by any chance uh, um not by sight uh we're not in heartspire my kingdom or the kingdom that i was part of um we're not there uh heartspire looks more like eros uh, it, it's still um vibrant but it's it's more i guess what you would think of as as normal to your understanding of the world green leaves green grass that sort of thing um so i don't think we, we must be a distance away. i i didn't explore much beyond the borders of heartspire when i was younger um, or even as a young woman, but um, this doesn't look like any of the neighboring territories. We must be, we must be at least, at least a territory or two away from Heartspire. Um, the problem with the Feywild is that uh, it is split into many different provinces, each ruled by different lords and ladies and dukes and, and duchesses. Um, the main thing you should know, wherever we are, if this, if this is a, a province which is ruled by. Uh, a sentient archfey an archfey who um is like us rather than a, a beast or a creature archfey can impose rules on their domains um and when i say rules i don't just mean laws there will be laws and things like that but these will be magical rules that you adhere to and that there are there are severe consequences for breaking 
Um. Okay, so for now, keep a low profile. Perhaps ask Rosemary to just take it down a little bit. Certainly. Uh, I think that um, until we know where we are, until we know whose domain that we are in, uh, we should be cautious, certainly. Um, but it also can be that that can make things safer for us. A lot of the archfeys and lords, they don't like people causing trouble. Um, this is one of the reasons that whilst Lunaria is a part of the, the Valkyrian Empire, we're not conquered in the same way that Kallus is seeking to do with Erois. We join voluntarily and Kallus leaves ruling of the planet to the archfey lords and ladies here. Um, mm. Because even if Valkyrian troops were to land, the magic would still have some power over them here. It can make things like attacking creatures difficult. It can make stealing from them difficult. Uh, it depends on the Archfey, really. They set their own rules. I have a question. Now is the time, I think. Before we, before we step any further, whatever knowledge I have... But keep in mind, Lucius, it's been a long time since I was here. Uh, it's close to something like 800 years, 700 years... A lot can change. I was going to ask about time, actually, considering that we've been in certain places where time acts differently than it does on mm. Erois. Now, does that well, affect your curse, being here? I don't know. I honestly don't know. My understanding is that most places in astral space, um, time will progress for us no different to Erois. We will still experience days of around the same length, etc., but it's how much time passes on other worlds can vary. I mean, you saw this with Erois itself. <clears throat> it may be that a day here is half a day back on Erois, or maybe it's two days or three days. It's not normally longer than that. There are there are stories of people getting trapped in the Twilight Nebula um, beyond Lunaria who they wander in and uh, as young strapping soldiers and they emerge as old geriatrics the, that seems to be more of the case if you are out in the the wilds of the nebula here on lunaria time seems to function as it does in most of the astral space most of the worlds of the astral space but i don't know it may affect this curse more and she kind of looks at it you can see that there's been some progress like the the thorn is you know coiling up her arm it looks a little bit further ahead than what it was um in the few hours that it you know you've been making plans on a and things like that um I'm sure you're keeping a keen eye on its progress, Nova as Anthalia, and whether yes, it, yes, we can, it's worth looking and seeing if it's shifting at increasingly fast or slower speeds than I'll what it was on Arus. I'll keep an eye on it, and I, as far as I can tell, I don't know if there are any effects to it apart from killing me. Uh, I haven't felt any different. I don't. I'm not in oh, pain or a, ill or anything. Just apart from death, you know, that's not well, any of those things. What I'm saying, my dear, is that uh, I, unlike a normal poison, normally with a poison you begin to feel nauseous or running a temperature or something like that, and I've not noticed anything like that so far. Yes. Good. Well, that's something. Well, I'll let you know if that changes, of course. I don't want to put you... I don't want to put any of you at, at greater risk. If there's anything I can share, I will. Now's not the time for playing a hero speaking of heroes here he comes <laughs> so yeah quill did you so you fly up and you want to kind of get to the canopy and stuff before yeah before i uh fly above it i want to instead cast uh arcane eye and have mm -hmm. that float above while i fly back down um okay. so invisible uh arcane is there eye, a range on it can it can it uh, like can it go far away from you? Yeah, I can cast it thirty feet from me, but uh, after that, it just, it just after that, there's, it, uh, it, it can have any range. Okay, um, so you could just leave it up there, pay. basically. Yeah, it, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't yeah there's pay. no there's no limit how far away. So, okay, yeah. but it would just stay there above the canopy, and then you fly back down, and you can switch your vision to the. Uh, you just are aware yeah. of what it can see, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And I can move it around as well. Yeah. Well, even when you fly up there, um, it, it's kind of a little... Uh, you fly up and it takes you a while, right? Because the trees become so dense, the closer you get to the canopy, you eventually have to like fly to a branch and then sort of like climb up a little bit and then you can fly to the next one because they become so thick and tense. And it, it actually takes you a fair bit of time to get all the way to the canopy. But eventually you manage to flap up, um, you push yourself through the uppermost leaves 
and you're greeted by the most incredible sky um it's streaked with purple and pink and blue um but as it seems to stretch out further and further you know when it gets to the real horizon that sky begins to shift and change and in one direction it becomes almost slate gray um streaked with like black and white and then in the other it becomes much more like blues and and light greens and it becomes more like the erosian uh, erosian sky um, but it's so much brighter and more saturated um, and you can see that that is on the very edges of like the horizon distance you can see that changing the canopy uh stretches out i mean this place stretches out for miles like the canopy is just miles and miles of this luminous blue, uh, blue forest um you know a real life equivalent would be something like uh like the black forest in germany right like this huge woodland that stretches like a huge chunk of land um but you oh. do think that in the distance it does begin to sort of like disperse and you know you could pretty much pick any direction travel in it and eventually you'll find something else but you don't see any things like settlements or anything immediately Okay, but the main thing is one direction is a color. As good color as the other. Direction is... Yeah, so that's the only thing is like, yeah, like to the uh, west, the sky becomes more gray and black. Um, and then to the east, it becomes more like the Erosian sky and it becomes more colorful. Um, and then you've got this kind of, yeah, kind of bluey pink uh, around this forest area. Cool. Uh, yeah, when I get back... Um, wow, that was... Uh tougher than I thought it was going to be, and uh, sorry if I dropped anything on you from up there, but, uh, I mean, whatever we're in, uh, we are in the middle of it. Um, this this place is uh, huge, but uh, the only identifying thing I can uh, spot is in one direction, a grey skies, and the other one, it's like a row is. I mean, I, I have no idea, Thalia, what your what it's like where you are from it's more like a Rois where i'm from but again this was this was 800 years ago okay like it could be that mesmer has changed things the archway here look i mentioned to you that they can project these magical rules but they they also shape the province that they're in um emotions have power here uh things like it, it depends on the strength of the Archfey who rules that particular domain or that kingdom. They might exert their will and, and other people might not be able to influence it very much. But if you're in a region where the Archfey is particularly weak or not particularly sentient, uh, or is perhaps more of like a creature or a spirit, uh, you'll find that your own emotions... Um, and she, she gestures and she points at Rosemeadow. Look at the way that the, the area is changing around Rosemeadow. And you can see that like... Like, Rosemeadow is carrying, like, these flowers, but the flowers, the patterns on them almost look like little smiley faces. Like, the patterns in the flowers, like, form, like, little smiley faces. And, like, there's, like, butterflies flying around her, and, like, it, like the very air is kind of, like, shaping around her. Whereas, like, and then and then uh, Thalia points at Kyrie, who's looking more nervous, um, and you can see that, like, the grass that was lilac is more blue around her, um, and things like that. Like, you can see that their emotional states are actually influencing the area around them. So it could be that Mesmera has maybe changed Heartspire. Uh, it might be, it might still be like the Erosian sky. It might be this black gray color. I, I don't know. Um, I, I think the best thing we need to find somebody who knows the Feywild now. We need to find uh, a settlement or um, a, a traveler or somebody who might be able to give us some more information. That would be the best way to get an understanding of what has happened to Heartspire. Okay, uh, in that case, I think we just have to pick a direction. I can't spot anything. Uh, I mean, the Arcane Eye is so high up now, I don't imagine it will spot any small villages or settlements or anything like that, but uh, I can keep it up there and just keep an eye out. But uh, also, no ships, um, no Valkyrian, oh, good. anything. Good. Um, I, imagine, I imagine that Valkyrian will keep his forces in one of the major cities or we'll keep them in orbit i imagine that most most of the people we'll meet here will be in service of the archfey lords and ladies that doesn't mean they will be friendly if you are wanted by the valkyrian empire and that news has reached here it's likely that you know they'll be they'll know who you are and, and they may wish to capture you to gain favor with valkyrians so the other thing i should let you know is that the feywild is um 
Lunaria, the Twilight Nebula, it gives power to things here. Concepts can become creatures. Um, I was always told stories about the Rose Knight. The Rose Knight is, is an embodiment of love. Like, they are not just a knight who believes in love, they are the concept of love given a physical form. Things like death. Death walks Lunaria. Like, death is a figure that will just wander this place. And if we it, meet them, yes, they they may wish to just do what they do and and fin and end us. They have the we capability should... to do the thing that created them. Potentially, uh, I've never met any of them myself. Uh, these figures, because they're such big concepts, they're extremely powerful, um, and they tend to basically focus on whatever it is that they are. The the Rose Knight, for example, is supposed to be a champion of love. They are supposed to help people fall in love, help end love. They they anything to do with it, they are connected to it in some way. In the same way that death is. Death is the bringer of, of they they are finality here. Many creatures here are not immortal, but they'll simply be reborn somewhere else. But death <coughs> will end them. Like death is their their finality here. Okay, well let's avoid avoid death. Lucius, don't be scared. I'm absolutely fine. I don't know what you mean. Uh, hey, the, all... the grass around you is quivering. It's not. <laughs> it's just the breeze. Uh, it's literally like there are like patches in the grass. Like the grass is forming the shape of like a skull and crossbones around Lucius. Like <laughs> like you can see that like it's quivering, like shaking, and it forms like this this like scared death thing. What if symbol. I manifest something? Like another death, just by thinking <laughs> about it. Well, it's interesting. I don't. I, I think the concepts like the Rose Knight and, and and death, they are conjured by the myriad of like there are many many people here who believe in these concepts, and that's what's given them such a complex form. As an individual, I don't think you would be able to. Even a powerful individual like us, we may be able to conjure spirits, creatures, but they won't be anywhere near as powerful. Um, but you should just be wary of your emotions here. Um, Right. Not, not to say to be emotionless, but just be conscious of them. Um, certainly, if we all believe in something, the more minds that are united in a concept, the stronger that concept can be, and that can give its form more power, is, is the concept, is the thing to try and understand. Let's An individual's all, feelings. Let's all concentrate on de having a, a decursing entity. De the uncurse. The uncurser that can help hmm. Thalia immediately. And he's wearing oh, purple robes. Imagine it in your minds now. He's got okay. purple robes purple and, robes. and glowy hands. And when he places his hands upon someone, their curses are gone. Curses forever. lifted. Yes. Okay. Yes. Sure. But th whoever's imagining that, I'd like you all to roll uh, a uh, just a d20 all of plus. Us. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Maybe. Uh, Ayla's not doing it. <laughs> um, it's uh, a d20 plus either your intelligence, your wisdom, or your charisma modifier. So no proficiency modified, Ooh. just your modifier for intelligence, wisdom, or charisma. Unnatural 20. Unnatural that, 20. Yeah, we've got an 8. <laughs> <laughs> 10. So 38 total, and then Nova. I'm trying to decide whether or not to roll. Okay. Nova's going to act... I don't know how this would... Sh I'm going to tell you what I'm thinking, Mark, and I'm going mm -hmm. to ask what you think this manifests sure. as, but... Nova, for all her belief that she's here and here is the solution, there's something in her, in her heart of hearts, that doesn't think that this curse is going to get lifted. Mm -hmm. Sure. She just doesn't, um, she doesn't think okay. it's going to happen. Oh, that's great to know. Um, you, so the three of you, so Nova, the manifestation for you would be minor because it's just an individual, like, it's like a, it's like a worry. It's not like a concept necessarily. Um, and I think that we see it in the, the the kind of the colors around like Nova. I think that maybe like um, there is uh, like a, a tree branch behind Nova. There it begins to like creak and groan, and it almost just seems to. You almost think for a second over it's like saying failure, like in its groan of like the wood. But it could almost be like a breeze, like shifting the branch. Um, and the colors just seem a bit more muted around you. Um, the other three you all try and focus on this thing and 
you actually all begin to see because you're all powerful individual creatures like the more powerful the creature got imagining stuff affects it you begin to see this form like this kind of misty form but it's erratic it's all over the place like it's wearing purple robes but that seems to change into like more of like a, a gust haven nobleman's outfit and then it becomes more like a priest robe at the top but then there's like armor and shoulders and then it seems to have many Kill limbs me. and it's kind of got, <laughs> and, but it's all mist and then it just dissipates it's it's like something is beginning to form and then it just vanishes um we did it we, we, that was it. it the decursor uh well i mean i i tried to describe purple robes i feel like it was obvious that i was going for the, the clerical robes no, uh, no, it'd be more like a, a sorcerer's robes, a, a, like a no, mystical no, no, no. entity. It'd be like a no. fighter, like strong and ready to take no, on no. anything. Right. Clerics removed personally. It's, all right, okay, we are not united in this one, but we. Uh, either you're way, going to, Key, like you're you're fine trying to, trying to physically manifest something like that. It's very difficult. <laughs> the, the the individuals of the Fey we don't bother trying anymore. C certainly, very powerful Arch Fey or perhaps you know individuals can manifest smaller creatures to do simple things. But trying to create some sort of trying to manifest a, a concept of a, a universally powerful thing that can undo curses, I think that's a that's quite a reach to do something like that. But you might be able to manifest something smaller and simpler, but it, it's difficult to do. Uh, people have different minds about these sorts of things. But things like the concept of love or death, that's very easy for a lot of people to imagine, and so it creates a stronger stronger visage, stronger persona. Okay. Okay. Uh, in that case, we just I think we just need to get moving. Pick uh, a direction. And... and uh, Try and find some way. Um, I mean, if I spin the eye around, I guess there's no real indication of a good direction to go beyond erosion sky versus grey, yeah. miserable. Right. Um, and even then, you could you could still just go north. Like maybe if you go further north, the sky will start changing once you've travelled a bit to the north or south. You don't know. Okay. But now it's just a big old wood. I would say maybe make a survival check for me, Quill. A uh, survival? Oh, plus yeah. eleven, really? Yeah, I think uh, Ayla would oh, probably 17. do this. She's in like a wood as well. Uh, 15, 17. I think you and Ayla would definitely, and Ayla maybe point, points out and says like, all right, I know you're all having a fun time looking around and like you spot this at the same time Ayla does. It does look like there's a trail and she points to what does seem to be like a very um, faded, well-worn woodland trail that seems to pass through this clearing um, and it leads to the north and south. And it, it it's not really a road, but it's more that like trees have been cleared, branches have been pushed aside, the ground, the grass is a little bit more worn. Not very obvious at first, but for people that know what to look for, like you can definitely tell and see that there is something of a path traveling north to south. Uh, I, I think this will be the way to go. Uh, looks like someone's uh, used this before, so if we just try and follow this as best we can, we'll find s something or someone or some who. Uh, so this looks like the best way. We have nothing else to go on right now. No, not at all. And we're in the middle of a very big forest. Well, we need to get a move on, regardless. So mm -hmm. any direction is better than no direction. Uh, Rose Meadow? Yes! Hello, th friends! Thank you so much for bringing me here, Cole. This place is amazing! Oh, it's so wonderful! Look at these happy little flowers! And, like, they are yeah. uh, very cute. Uh, but we are going to stop moving now. Uh, and uh, again, we don't know what's going to okay. be ahead of us. So okay. try and keep us a close knit group and we'll move forward together. Okay, all right. And then she's like, um, oh, this, uh, and she's like, looks around and she kind of says, and she looks at Kyrie and she's like, would you like to ride on my back? And, and Kyrie's kind of like, oh, fucking like terrified. Um, but she kind of is like, she just like nods her little head and Rose Meadow like helps her like crouches down and Kyrie kind of like gets up on her back. Um, she's like, it's okay, you can sit on my back. And like, she begins to sort of like walk along with you. Um, Big Cat sort of like looking around. You see Big Cat definitely goes into like, I'm in unfamiliar territory. I'm a cat. He's like, he like, he's just like, he's smelling everything and he's looking around, but he's uh, stalking ahead, it looks like. And yeah, you guys make it. Do you want to go north or south? Uh, the way the trail was, uh, it's the trail both ways. Yeah, I mean, it's like a road, right? Like, it runs both north. ways. Sure, north. <laughs> north is good. All right, I'll go to my north bit of the notes. 
Also, the arcane eye can uh, follow overhead for an hour. Okay, sure. Um, I think the arcane eye wouldn't necessarily see anything because, like, it's like the arcane eye is almost like the canopy of the trees just becomes like the ground. Like, it can't penetrate through the canopy, so it just sees sky and then canopy. Yeah. But after... You guys travel for, like, I'd say, like, six to eight hours. And oh, my don't God. And you signs <laughs> of anything. Like, you're walking through the woods, and it's beautiful. Like, it's, it's genuinely looking around just stunning like everywhere you go is this kind of like vibrant colors um you hear animals shuffling around but yeah you don't encounter anybody um off, around about the six to seven hour mark as you've been journeying you kind of stop you pull out some like rations you have a, a brief moment of rest you carry on going uh you actually hear quill you with perception perception boy um you hear uh, and see up ahead um signs of something going on maybe uh you know several hundred feet ahead in the forest line you see something quite large moving very rapidly and you can hear uh what sounds like very in the distance like clattering armor and almost like drums and you can hear shouts and cries and you can hear like some bestial roar and like the sound of like trees being felled and you can see this rapid movement there is some sort of battle going up ahead like, you can see this from where you are. Like, you hear and sense it ahead of everyone else. Um, I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll stop everyone and get them to listen out as well uh, so mm -hmm. they can hear it. Yeah, you all... So when Quill points all out, you all start to hear it. Um, it grows louder. Like, it's moving in your... Like, coming towards you, but, like, not for you guys, just coming in the direction that you're coming from. Um, and you definitely, like, whatever this thing is, is it's big. You can hear these loud roars. You hear the clattering of a head all. And you start to hear voices. You start to hear a, like... Yes, my friends, come, come, let us finish. The beast is nearly, we need, we need to pursue it, pursue the beast. Um, and you hear like, uh, play, 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 my boy, play, they go. And then you hear like a, -dum 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 -dum, like a marching, like a, like a kind of hunting drum sound. And you hear like another voice kind of like, archers, archers fire. And you hear the whistling of arrows. And then you hear one big roar. You hear like a proper bestial and you hear something that sounds like, you know, great, like, huge ballista bolts being fired, like, thoof, thoof, thoof. Um, and then there are a couple of screams. You hear, like, take cover! And, like, oh, God, it's stronger than we thought. And you hear, like, trees being felled. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, what do we do? Uh, is, wait, is it still coming towards us, this thing, or...? Uh, it sounds like maybe about 100 feet ahead and because the, the the trees are so big and thick here like you haven't you can see movement but you don't know exactly what's going on um but about 100 feet ahead there is some sort of battle going on for sure um and it sounds like it's going very badly for one side uh we've got no idea what's beyond the tree but anyway, i think we should help we should scout ahead maybe your rk and i can come under the canopy and, and check I, I, I think it would take too long. It's really high up. Uh, oh. Also, it's gone. <laughs> it's uh, that was six hours it's, ago. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, it has been a while. Uh, we can go have a look if you if like. Someone's in trouble. We must help them. You're, you're heroes, aren't you? We must help them. Okay. Right. Uh, I can fly up again and get an overhead perspective on this thing. You may not it's... seen it above the canopy. You may have to. Uh, not that high up. Just, uh... You hear like another like. Oh! You hear like a Wilhelm scream like. Oh! And you see somebody get thrown through the air, like. Whoop. I'm going. <laughs> I will okay. let you know when to run. So Quill, you're gonna like fly ahead, like you're gonna fly up and go ahead, right? What yeah, the rest of you are doing? You're gonna wait for Quill to come back. Um, start making my way. Would, um, yeah, essentially, would slowly start making her way forward. So just like on movement speed, like land yeah. speed, basically, you guys are gonna we'll go ahead. Yeah, Ayla's gonna yeah. do the same. She'll go up with you. I think that um, Thalia will look and. Uh, she looks to you, Nova, and says, my pistols aren't going to work very well here because of the Magitech. I think I should stay here with, with Kyrie and Rosemeadow and I can at least protect them, but you, sh you should go with your friends and investigate. Sounds like a good idea. I, think I don't think we'll be much... We'll I don't think pressure. I'll be much use here. Yes, I think that, yeah, and Kyrie's not much of a fighter as well, so... Um, and we'll, we'll have Big Cat with us as well, but she says, you go. Okay. Uh, and, like, the group of them, the NPCs basically are like, we're not going in the fight. <laughs> you go fight. <laughs> we're going to stay here. No NPCs. Um, yeah, so Quill, you're the first to arrive as the others are coming on land, um, and you see the the what is happening. You can see 
uh, you see the creature first, being a huge creature. Uh, it is an enormous, it has like the body of a lion, and it has these great draconic-like wings, but its face is like this twisted, like, man's face. But it's like stretched, and it's got this huge jaw with razor-sharp teeth, um, and you can hear it just like, <sighs> Little shiny knights, I'm going to feed on you for hunting me <sighs> and it's like snooching around and it's its tail it has like this long tail that ends in a big thick hammer like club and it has all these spikes growing out of it but this thing is massive and it looks incredibly powerfully strong it swipes its claw and a giant tree comes like tumbling down um scattering away from the falling tree you see a cluster of knights all of which have got this um purple but with all sorts of uh, myriad colors woven into it tabard um with this very resplendent looking art like piece of chest plate armor with like light as like an emblem um and they're all like some of them have got bows some of them have got spears some of them are on steeds with lances and they're all scattering like oh god my lady my lady the beast is too strong uh, and they're kind of calling out and then you see there are three figures that stand out from the rest uh, one is a woman with almost like she has feathers for hair and she has like a humanoid face but she has long feathers instead of hair and she has a very long kind of hooked nose um and she's wearing this resplendent like gleaming mail and she's got a shield and a, and a, a spear in one hand um and uh she almost looks like a peacock like her hair is like peacock's feathers falling down um, and she's calling out like two arms, two arms. We cannot, we cannot let this beast uh, defile the, the the nearby settlements. We must slay it. We must slay it, my friends. Come, come! And she's like trying to rally them, but she's lost control of the force. Uh, next to her is a. Uh, you guys have seen beast folk like Santa, like bunny people like Santa. This is a rabbit who walks on two legs. Like he's like an anthropomorphic rabbit, um, but he's wearing like the outfit of like a, an English longbowman. So he has like a padded gambeson. He's got like a little round pot helm um, and he's got a big bow and he's just like, come my lady, come. And he's like, come on, you bastards, get back in the fight. And he's like firing arrows at this thing. <laughs> okay. And then cowering behind a log underneath them is uh, a satyr who looks exactly like uh, Danny DeVito satyr from Hercules. Like he's got a big pot <laughs> belly, he's got like the curling yes. ran horns, but he's dressed like a little soldier and a drum is on the ground and he's just like covering his ears and he's like crunched up underneath this log trying oh to desperately God. hide. Um, uh, I mean, yeah. I'm gonna send a message to uh, Sentry and say, it's a... Uh, 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 bring everyone. Uh, we need to help. Okay. Right. We're coming to help. Well, I'm assuming you guys would like to help, so that is going to be initiative. All right. Woo! Nice. Initiative. Uh, oh, okay. 17. Oh, Willy Bill. <laughs> Let me do Ayla's first. Oh. So, just because I've got to roll it. So, all right, Lucius. I got a solid eight. Eight, lovely. Kilek. Uh, 17. 17. Sentry. 14. 14. And Nova Vija. 20. 20. Well, none of you are going first, but you all burst out. So you all come bursting out of the tree line. Um, there is like a, this thing has created a clearing. There wasn't a clearing here, but this giant manticore, it is a sort of like super big manticore, basically. Um, it has almost formed a clearing. You can see that there are these big fallen trees that it's like knocked over. Um, it's like sweeped a path of brush and grass, creating about a 60 foot radius like clearing um beyond that there are trees and you can see several of the knights are like hiding amongst the trees that you could use as cover and these big you know 20 you know almost like 10 20 foot thick trees um and then a couple of them are trying to climb up them they've got all the branches overhead and stuff like that but there is this giant clearing space and the the manticore immediately senses all of you as you're not stealthing you've all just kind of like piled in it kind of whips its head around and sees you uh it with one claw swipe it just knocks the the peacock night lady and the rabbit man it just knocks them back it just like one sweep it just sends them sprawling they 
fall unconscious. They just like fall into the ground. Um, just for the narrative sake, they don't look like they're dead. It looks like they've literally like bashed their heads and fallen unconscious. Um, but they just get knocked back immediately. Um, and then this thing is going to yeah turn on you guys. Um, did you have a question, Chris Trot? Yes, it's been a little bit. Mm -hmm. I've still got very low HP. Oh, you should our... have had a long rest. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You had like you've had like like days in Horizon and stuff. Make sure everybody has a long rest because like. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I've used rest. a couple spells now. Um... Yes, any spells that you didn't use, yeah. Excellent. Yep, 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 yep. Awesome. Um, and uh, yeah, so. So apart from Quill, those of you on the ground, you guys all rushed in this together, right? So you all kind of yeah. like mm -hmm. rushed in as one group. Um, yeah. In that case, seeing all of you rush in together and Quill flying through the air, uh, who would be at the front of the group? Probably Sentry and Ayla, I'm going to guess. They're the fastest, yeah. right? Ayla's yeah, got the yeah. most movement Ayla's speed. Ayla's got the most movement, so it'd be Ayla. And then Sentry, I'm guessing like Nova and Lucius, you'd probably be behind Sentry for, you know, defensive protection. Purposes, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this thing whips up its great big tail and it flicks it in the direction of all of your party kind of springing from the tree line. Um, and several uh, big spikes come flying out of its tail. Uh, it's going to pick Sentry, Ayla, and Quill. And you guys are, well, it fires one, how many is this? Da, 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 da. 1d3 tail spikes against each of you. Um, so Quill. D3. So that's going to be just one tail spike at Quill. Uh, it's going to be, this is against, uh, that's going to be three against Ayla. And then against Sentry, three against Sentry as well. So I'll do the first one against uh, Quill. Uh, that's oh, going to that be was how many was firing towards fired, us, I yeah. see. So okay. one spike comes your way, Quill. That's a 13 to hit. Uh, nope. Nope. Okay, so you manage to like, you dodge out the way, you kind of dip under, you let your wings drop and you, before you start flying again and the tail spike. And this thing is like several inches long. It's quite thick. It's like a, it's like a javelin. It just into a tree behind you, causing splinters to erupt. And it stays embedded in the tree as well. Um, I'll do you sentry next, just because then I can just do uh, Ayla by myself. Okay. Uh, that is a 21 to hit you sentry on the first tail exactly. spike. Exactly, yep. All right, let's do the second one. That's a natural one, so that's a miss. And then the last one is a natural 20. Of course it is. Oh, um, it's all right. So we'll do the first one uh, so that I can work out the damages and stuff. Uh, so the first tail spike, it actually uh, flies through and that's gonna be 16 points of piercing damage. And mm -hmm. the spike is embedded into you. So as oh, this tail shit. spike, it like, like embeds, it impales you. Whilst you have a spike impaled with you, um, each spike, your movement is reduced by 10 feet and you have a minus two penalty to attack saving throws and ability checks. This thing is like wedged in your side and it's making it hard to like attack. It's like making it hard to move and dodge and stuff like that. Um, and it's okay. like this sort of, you know, I would say something like 12 inches long spike is like driven into your body. Yeah, that'll take Sentry back a bit. <laughs> yeah, and then, well, and then the second one, which is the critical hit comes in yeah. uh, and that's going to be 2d8 max so 16 plus whatever i roll oh that's not too bad uh that's going to be 16 uh 23 points of damage and a mm -hmm. second spike impacts in and it's accumulative so like while you've got these two things in you you've got like what? minus 20 speed and like minus 40 oh, wow. attacks and and that saving throws minus yeah. 20 feet <laughs> So the motor, like, like so, like one's in like your leg, and like the other one's in your shoulder, and it's making hard to like move to attack, like because these things are like so you know embedded in there. Um, I will tell you that yeah, you if you want to try and like do something to get rid of them, that you can absolutely try that on your turn. So, but you you tell okay. me what you want to try and do to how you want to try and do that. Uh, cool. I'm not going to tell you necessarily how to do it, but they can be removed. Um, and then against Ayla, uh, so Ayla has got AC of twenty. Uh, so one, the first one's going to hit. The second one is going to miss. And the last one is a natural 20. Exactly what I did to uh, Sentry. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Beyond. Um, oh. So that's going to be... Ooh, and big damage as well. Uh, so that's going to be 18 points of damage. She's not raging yet. So 18 damage. And then the next one is the crit. 
for another 16 plus another 16 for 32. Ow. Um, Again, you see the same thing. So Ayla gets like two of these things, like one in her side and like the other one in her upper thigh, like like embeds in like these big quill, like, uh, you know, javelins, like heads, like spearheads. And like, you just hear like, ow, fuck, (laughs) like just call out (laughs) angrily. How Um, many quills does this tail have? So uh, it now has, how many was that? That was three, three, and one. So that's seven less than what it did have. I should note this down. Um, I mean, do you want to try and do a quick calculation while this thing's moving uh, around, Quill? I mean, uh, if I'm just looking at it, is it more? Is it... <laughs> uh, it's definitely got less. Like, it's, it's yeah, it has a set amount. Um, about half? For sure. But it fired seven. Um, no, not about half. It's definitely less than half. And then oh, it's going to start moving towards you guys. So it probably spends about like 20 feet of movement. So it's about 30 feet away from all of you. Uh, in fact, as you know, it would spend all of its movement. It just comes barreling towards you. It's like, it's yeah, it spends like 30, 30 feet of movement. So it's about 20 feet away from you guys. And then at the end of its turn, it regenerates 1d4 tail spikes. Oh, oh, they come back too. Cool. All right, only gets one back. Um, so... Damn. Okay. So yeah, you see one of its like one of its expended tail spikes. It just comes back. It grows back immediately. Uh, Nova Vija, we go to. Hello. Um, Hello. I would like to use my thirty foot of movement to kind of split off from the group um, mm-hmm. as far as I can, um, mm-hmm. and then um, I will use Hexblade Curse. Um, so a little shimmer of light comes out from Tian Gong and shimmers over the manticore. Um, and I'm going to go for a good classic blight. Um, okay. So could you make me a constitution saving throw 18? It's probably going to save. This thing does look pretty tough. I mean, I only just made it 8 plus 10, 18 on the dot. So it makes it, but just barely. Okay. Uh, I've rolled... 46 total so 23 three um but plus five from the hexblade curse as well mm-hmm. uh yep. does that get like that down as well mm, yes it would do so I'll, it will go down to two and i'll heal two more so um but yeah you kind of tian gong the black energy springs forth it wraps you know the the effect hits the creature you can see it kind of like Rah! what is this and you can see it speaks but in this kind of very broken way and it's like eyes lock onto nova's like ah, hateful little mage <laughs> looks pretty angry um that's uh that's all she got that's all she got uh okay um well ayla is gonna rage as a bonus action <laughs> first of all classic uh, one of those um, and her movement is reduced by 20 feet, but she's still got 25 feet of movement, so she can still get within striking distance. So with two of these, like, spikes, because uh, it's, uh, she's, like, thinks about trying to take one out, but, like, she wants to attack. So she's just going to run forward, crackling with lightning, um, and attack. And I'll try and play as Katie, so I won't do a reckless attack. Uh, I will just attack with the penalty, which is minus four. Um, for a 23, which hits, uh, I will do... 10 plus 9. And that's 17 points of damage from one attack. And then a cool. second attack with a minus 4 is... Uh, I've got to take the minus 4 off of this. Um, that is going to miss, though. So the second attack, because of the spikes in her arm, because that would be a 17... Um, 17 total, the the, kind of like the spikes in her arm stop her from being able to complete the swing and like the creature manages to step back and avoid it and she kind of just "Ah," grunts in frustration. Um, And then lightning damage from Aura. Uh, Dex save is a failure. So that's going to be how many d6? 3d6. Is that thing? No, I'll just do it this way. One, two, three. for 10 more points of lightning damage. Nice. Yeah, Ayla gets up into its face, swings the hammer a couple of times, connects once, the lightning blasts out of her, but she's now um, up in this thing's grill. Keelik and Kalar. 
Um, I uh, am trying to figure out if there is any way for me to um, disrupt this tail anymore because it's pretty devastating from what I've seen so far. And I'm mm -hmm. wondering if a thunder wave, if I just went there, went flew close to the tail and thunder waved the tail, if there's any way of just breaking these spines Might or something and just... Uh, you could try it. Try and destroy that in some way. Um, sure. So yeah, I will try that. Uh, uh, fly close to the tail and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, thunder wave. Um, okay. So it needs to make a constitution save of 17 and it's a manticore, so I mean... It's, it's, a, really it's a 16. Good. I thought it was a 19. I rolled oh. a 6 plus 10. So 16 fails nice. just. Okay. Uh, it takes Maybe not expecting the... you to conjure this blast of lightning. It doesn't focus its attention on you. Uh, Are you just cast this at thunder. first level? Uh, no, I wasn't. I just pressed... Sorry, I pressed a 2d8. Sorry, I should have said I'm casting this at third level. Um, okay. So it's another... Uh, one, well, just cast two... it at third level and then give yourself the spell slot, the first level spell slot back. Yeah, uh, it was just I clicked the 2d8 on the spell slot. So mm -hmm. 4d8 damage. Um, and, oh, wow, 26 damage. Nice. Um, okay. uh, and, roll yeah. 3d4 for me. 3d4, 1, 2, 3, boom. What was that? What? 10. Was I, accidentally I accidentally somehow I was in a Discord call and I don't know how that happened because I definitely wasn't when I started this. <laughs> like, Who did you just I think, join? I think I, had, <laughs> I think I had a shortcut mapped and it, I think it either unmuted or like it joined it. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> 3D4. Wow. What did you get? Uh, I got uh, very good again. I got a 10. Okay. So, uh, so I would say that that blows, like, it breaks 10 of the spines. So oh. the Thunder Wave kind of blasts these things, and, like, 10 of the spines either get, like, shattered or sheared off or broken by the thunderous force of the Thunder Wave kind of <laughs> erupting forward in it. However, it's going to use its reaction to do a reactive flick, uh, which is it fires one of those tail spikes it still has back at you because you targeted it with a ranged weapon or spell. Um, okay, fair enough. And it's going to... Throw this your way, Keely. That's a 27 to hit, Keely Kadkalar. That'll do it. You're dead for sure. <laughs> so 16 dead. points of damage. And mm. likewise, you are now impaled with a spike. That's reduced your movement by 10 feet. And you have a minus two penalty to attack roll, saving throws, and ability checks. Oh, good. Good. Uh, um, are you done? And that's... Uh, that's uh... Yeah, I, I think that's all I'll do for now. And okay. uh, oh, actually, uh, if he used his reaction to flick at me, then I'll also fly back a bit, so I'm away from him again. How far back? You would have uh, flown I, a little bit towards him. I've got 50 feet of movement, so you get about 20 might... feet back. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. That's, that's very. It's very convenient because it, after your turn, it's going to use its legendary action to do a pounce, which is it moves 20 feet oh. without provoking opportunity attacks and makes a bite attack against the creature. <laughs> Oh. So it's going to leap up <laughs> and it tries to chomp you, basically. Oh my um, god, okay. That's a 25 to hit. Oh, yeah, that's unshieldable as well. And that is going to be 25 points of damage. Ooh. And you are bleeding. Whenever a creature moves or takes an action, moves more than five feet or takes an action or reaction, they take 1d8 damage that cannot be resisted in any way. Um, uh, so, like, as it bites you, it okay. leaves this, in, like, deep gashing wound that is, like, bleeding profusely. Wow. Used to lose, so, to be fair. I've lost a lot of blood. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that was its legendary action, so we go to Sentry. Um... So, so this how, thing's how like underneath Quill, like because it's huge. Quill. It's like it's like ten feet under Quill. It's like it's about uh, it's about 30, 40 feet away from you. It's it's like a, about sixty feet away from Nova now. Um, it's kind of leapt to the side. Okay, can I bonus action Misty Step towards it? So I'm about thirty feet from it and far enough away from the other people that we just met. Mm -hmm. Um, and then can yeah, I... Don't worry about those action? guys. Consider those guys, okay. like, out the fight. Like, they've either retreated or they've, they've, the Manticore is not paying attention to them. Okay. And can I, as an action, do Turn the Faithless? Okay. 
So you want to be, you want to be thirty feet away 30 from it, feet. or you want to be thirty feet closer to it. Thirty feet closer to the, so I'm on thirty feet from the manticore. Right. Okay. I'd say that at the moment, yeah, you're, you're, yeah, you could, you could, you could even just walk that. You could just walk ten feet, and you'd be within thirty feet. Okay. I'll do that then. Okay. Yeah. So you just walk up, and then you want to try and turn the faithless. How's that work? Yeah. So uh, yeah, Sentry will raise up her shield, and the uh, the Solven emblem on the front will glow mm -hmm. gold and project out a golden radiant light towards the Manticore. Mm -hmm. And she'll just shout, "Leave this place! Leave us be!" Try and turn nice. it away. Do I? What is it like a saving throw? Like That's what's and what's the effect? Is saving throw. Is it and against any creature or a fey or fiend? It's turned uh, for a okay, minute or yeah. until it takes damage. It's a it's a fey creature uh, it, because it is in it's it's a special type of manticore. Um, okay, six. So and and the effect is that it's turned, so it has to move away from you, right? Like it has yeah. to spend its 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 turn moving away from you. Yeah, for a minute. Okay. Yeah. Sure. And then is, is it just a minute until it take, or is it like can it save out of it, or is it just that's it? No. Nope. Creature is turned for a minute on the failure or until it takes damage. Okay. All right. Um, good stuff. Well, Lucius, you're up next. So yeah, like Sentry strides forward. I mean, unless there's anything else, Sentry, you want to do on your turn. Um, um, right, is that action and move? You've got a bonus action, action left. Action and movement. Um, could, could I try and remove one of these spikes as a bonus but action? You, and, and that's exactly yeah. So you can, if you want to like reach up and try and pull one of these spikes out, it's a bonus action to do that. Um, awesome. You have to make an athletics check. It's a strength yep. athletics check. So you're like reaching oh, up you, and you're going. Did you misty step? No, she didn't in the end because she could just oh, walk ten feet. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Cool. Because like because this right. is theater of the mind, like I'm being, I don't want to like get too it caught up in like yeah, yeah, that's cool. and stuff. Got an unnatural twenty on the athletics check. Unnatural twenty. Okay, so you rip this thing free, um, which is gonna reduce like you don't have, you only have the one in you now. You do take four oh. points of damage because you're literally like <laughs> pulling this out of your body, but now you only have the one spike, so your penalty is only the ten feet and, and minus two, not minus four and twenty feet. So cool. you remove one spike from you. Um, cool. All right, and then we go to Lucius. <laughs> Seeing how dangerous big hit by that is, I'm going to cast something a bit different uh, that I okay. haven't done before, which is Mirror Image, uh, which is going to create three illusionary duplicates of myself. Um, yeah. Just going to Love it. mitigate some of the damage, hopefully, or hit a dupe instead. Yeah, and then it's a chance. 100% cast good. that before, but not in a combat scenario. Have I? No, I just I mean, think... like... Oh, like, actually, narratively. Off camera, you've 100% cast oh, that see. one. Oh, I see. And I'm going to spend my bonus action to try and remove one of these uh, spines from Quill. Oh, if, uh, actually, if you want no, to move he's up in the to, sky, yes. isn't he? He's flying up. You could move up to Ayla or Sentry and do it on either one of those guys. Who has the most spines in them right now? Ayla. Ayla's got two in her. I'll try and remove one of those then. Okay, yeah, you can spend a... So it's a bonus action and it's an athletics check. Strength athletics check. All right. That is a 19. Yeah, you do. Ayla's going to take a D8 of damage as you pull it free. That she can't reduce. It's going to hurt, but it's worth it. Yeah, just do it. And she kind of calls out. It isn't reduced by her barbarian rage. You can't reduce this damage. Um, but she's like grunts as you pull it free. And she's like, thanks. Uh, fuck this thing. And uh, yeah, you managed to pull one free. Um, the Manticore has used its legendary action this turn. And on its turn, uh, turn the Faithless. It like sees Sentry and it's like shielding its eyes from like Sentry Shield. It's like, no, ah, what is that? It's like backing away, like it's moving away from Sentry. Um, mm. Do you want to make an attack of opportunity, Quill or Sentry? Uh, I mean, mine will be uh, claws. I'm not going to bother. <laughs> yeah, if, it, if it takes damage, the um, turn of Faithless sure. uh, stops. So and I'm this oh, is okay. the, um, yeah, so there's an action in a 30 feet of you that can make a wisdom saving throw. Turn creature must spend its turn trying to move as far away from you as it can, and it can't willingly move to a space within 30 feet of you. It can't take reactions for its action. It can use only the dash action or try and escape from an effect that prevents it from moving. Yeah, this thing literally, so its wings begin beating, and it flies 100 feet up into the canopy, and it just uh, flies off. Like, it just vanishes from view into the thick tree line. Okay. <laughs> Combat's over. <laughs> like this thing for a minute, <laughs> I mean, it's gonna travel yeah, a thousand feet. I it mean, just goes a thousand oh feet God. away from Sentry. Well, for two minutes, it needs to come back, right? <laughs> well, that's so. And again, you don't know. Like, you guys are gonna have, yeah, like a minute here, where we'll we'll basically come out of combat. Um, 
what do you guys do? Like, Sentry, you know that eventually this thing is it's mm. going to run out. What do you guys do? Uh, the You look around, so several of the knights, like, when you, this thing just goes running, the knights are all like, Huzzah! Huzzah! You've done it! The beast's <laughs> fleeing! <laughs> like, hurrah! Um, and you can see that they all have similar thing to the, the peacock lady. They all have, like, feathers instead of hair. They have, like, hook-shaped noses. Um, they all wear the same sort of tabards, but they're all different species of, like, fe bird, bird feathers. Some of them have, like, owl feathers. Some of them have, like, more, like, chicken feathers. Like, all parrot feathers, all different kind of birds. Um, and they're all sort of cheering, but then one of them is like, Lady Penelope, we must see to Lady Penelope and Radovan. Um, and they begin sort of like rushing over to their to their companions. But you guys have got like, what, what do you guys do? Like, think of it that you've got 10, you know, 10 spells or actions or whatever you guys want to do, basically. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I... Oh, you go. I was just going to say, I'd immediately run over to um, Lady Penelope and mm. um cast spare the dying um if, if, yeah you sure. know, whether or not yeah. i think she's actually dying no I'd, no I'd we'll say anyway. narratively maybe that's like enough to stir her to like normally it wouldn't put her on one hp but because this is an npc we'll just say that this basically like brings her because she was only unconscious like she was literally like knocked unconscious she's not even at zero hit points it was like she hit her head and sort of like knocked her out um and she kind of blinks a couple of times and like looks around um and she sees you and she's like oh, oh, oh. And she kind of like blinks for a second, like, oh, what is going on? Where is the beast? And she's like looking around. She's like, oh, and she like grabs her spear and she looks a bit dazed, like, uh, where? And yeah, looks sort of confused and dazed. Uh, uh, every, everything's okay. Um, the, the, the beast has, has gone, but um, I think it might come back. Uh, so we might want uh, to get ready or go or leave. Yes, let's just set up an ambush. Uh, we must, we must. Before it comes back. <sighs> She like blinks a couple of times. Like, then we should set up an ambush. Uh, my friends, my companions, the beast will return. Get up into the trees, set an ambush. Uh, dig a pit or something. We must face the beast again. Uh, and you can see that the knights around her are not into this plan. <laughs> they're, they're just like, they're like, Lady Penelope, perhaps a discretion is the better part of valor. The beast is clearly stronger than we were led to believe. Um, she's like, nonsense. We must stop it. We must stop the creature. It has been ravaging in the lands. I will not see us defeated by such a beast. Uh, I mean, uh, within uh, these minutes or two minutes, I want to uh, almost identify the archers and longer range uh, people and mm -hmm. gather everyone as I can as well for a beacon of hope and also to do some healing to restore this fighting force for when it does come back. Mm -hmm. um, sure. Uh, so yeah, the uh, there is a couple of like archers. All the archers are not dressed like knights. They're not the same um, like bird people. All the knights are the, these bird-looking humanoids. Um, the 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 archers are a mixture of things. There's actually like goblins. There's a hobgoblin. There's uh, this rabbit. The the rabbit man who seems to be unconscious. The one that Lady Penelope called Radavan. Um, there is a there's a couple of fairy folk who have got like short bows and things like that. All sorts of different races, but they're all dressed like little uh, English longbowmen, like little men at arms with like the little padded gambesons, the little sort of pot helms, um, and they're all dressed in the same way. And it's the colours. It's all purple and green that they're wearing. Um, and uh, they're like they look at you and they're like, oh, I, we we should get we should get Sir Radovan up, uh, Mr. Radovan. He he normally leads us in battle. Uh, one of the little fairies kind of looks at you, and you can see that the sure. rabbit man is still unconscious. So yeah, I mean, with um uh the beacon of hope, uh, it'll be maximum healing. So all of us plus one more gets mm -hmm. thirty. So I'll go with Radovan. Okay, um, sure. So thirty healing to everyone. Um, all right, everyone gets thirty healing. Nice, I will thank heal you. Ayla. Uh, and yeah, see see what Radavan says uh, when he's back. Yeah, Radavan kind of blinks, um, and he gets his little paw, and he like rubs his face, and he gets his little snout. And he's he's like a little Peter Rabbit rabbit, right? Like he's like an anthropomorphic Aww. rabbit. He's not like a bunny person. Um, uh, you know, his limbs, like his hands, have like he's got paws, but they he can hold weapons and stuff with them. Um, and his feet, he can stand on two legs. Um, and he kind of blinks too, uh, and he looks he looks he's like bloody hell. Uh, you're not like any. You're not. You're no avian knight. Who are you? What's going on? Where's the manticore? And he's like looking around, like Lady Penelope. Is she all right? And he's. he's you can see that he's like. Well, what's going on? Uh, Lady Penelope is uh, currently figuring out some kind of plan to ambush the creature when it returns in uh, just sake. a couple of minutes. <laughs> well, I. Uh, we need to figure out. I think 
we're best in the center of the ground to stop this thing from charging at you guys. Maybe if you can fire at it from a distance uh, while we distract it. Um, yeah, the, but the main thing is it's, it's tail, those spines, like they're, they're, they're a nightmare. Um, but yeah, if, if, if we can have a group hold the main ground, I can, have my, I can have my lot take cover in the trees. And now that we know what those spines do, we can be better prepared for it. But we need, we need a group to engage it, keep it focused on them. I was supposed to be Lady Penelope's knights, but they they panicked, they fled as soon as the thing started tearing them apart. The you watch and he looks and he like sees like some of your companions. He's like, I don't know who you are, but if you're willing to fight that thing, you should be watch out for its claws. It can rip through steel armor. Like it, it, it and he points to several of the knights, and you can see that parts of their armor have been literally like torn apart by this these claws. Um why hmm. why are you why are you fighting it? Uh, who are you asking this to? The rabbit man, or are you asking Lady Penelope? Uh, Those two I'll seem to be Radavan. the ones who are like... Oh, um, it's, when you ask Radavan, he goes to answer, and Lady Penelope interrupts. Like, she kind of looks over, and she's just like... <laughs> the illusion of choice. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's like he goes to answer, right? But she would overhear it and be like... And you get the sense that, like, she is the leader, but is also, like, this kind of zealous knight type, right? Mm. And she just says, ah, yes, we are, we are hunting the beast. Uh, it has been ravaging villages and causing terror and, and killing people. We we are here to slay it as true knights would. Uh, we are the knights of the splendid Penepoli, Penelope. Uh, Panapoli. Panapoli. I don't know how to pronounce that word. Uh, Panoply. The splendid pana Panoply. Uh, that's Mark Hume's not saying it. Wait, not the character. Wait, the character what's the name? I thought it was Penelope. So she, it is Lady Penelope. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. So she introduces herself. She's like, ah, I am Lady Penelope El Pavo Real. Uh, of the splend the wow. knights of the splendid Panapoli. <laughs> Panapoli. Oh, Lady God. Penelope okay. of the splendid Panapoli. <laughs> Penelope of Panapoli. Fay man. Penelope of Panapoli. And Pineapple. is that where we is, is that where we are currently? Are we in Panapoli? No, no, no. That is the name of my. We are free knights. We do not. Okay. We do not serve any lord or lady. These are these are free lands here. Uh, these these belong simply to the wilds. Uh, but beasts like that, they tend to they grow to abominable sizes. They feed upon the natural magical energies here. They grow in size and strength, and then they come and strike at at, set, at settlements and citizens. And it is up to us, glorious knights, to put them to the sword or spear. In my case, I will the spear. And come, okay. come! You are clearly heroes. You leapt to our aid. You are, you are clearly a knight of steel and stone. We, we shall fight together and defeat the thing. Uh, sounds like a noble cause. Indeed, there's indeed. a monster that needs she, like, to be slain. On, we shall help you, you slay it. Excellent, Radovan. Are your archers ready this time? We must not have them flee into the woods. And he's like, "Yes, of course, my lady. Yes, absolutely. We will not flee." Uh, but he's like, "Fucking, uh, my <laughs> guys didn't flee go like anywhere." Hell. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, well, no, he's like, "We didn't flee the first fucking oh, time." Like, um, but he's like, "Absolutely, my lady. Yes, we should be." Where's Where's Dago? Where's our Where's our musician? Um, and you can see they're both looking around. <laughs> wow. Uh, I mean, I can <laughs> bust out some more healing if needed. Um, uh, I do not see him among. I do not see him among the injured. And like they're looking around, and like you can see the knights have kind of come out limping, and you know they're starting to get themselves ready and stuff like that. Um, I will have you seen a, a, a musician? Can I can I have a look around? Maybe a perception check or we hear. You don't, music? You, I mean, with your perception check, like you don't need to. You don't hear any music, but you do see Nova. You would see the discarded drum, but Quill, you, you see the little satyr is like trying to sneak off. Like he's like creeping through the woods, and he's like trying to make a fucking sneaky exit away from this place. <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> I have no idea where he's gone. Okay, they're just like, ah, oh, damn, damn him. Ah, uh, well, I guess we must we must battle without music then, Radovan. Yes, my lady, very good. <laughs> it's just, just like, I... I don't want this thing to die. Like, <laughs> I'll chase after him later, after the fight. Sure, sure. <laughs> um, uh, well, okay. you, again, like, uh, we'll say that this conversation took like, you know, 30, 40 seconds. I'm not going to, I don't want to like spend out like, or maybe it took a minute or something like that. So if you've got any more like preparations you want to do, like Ayla pulls the other spine out of her shoulder, which is going to take, she's going to take some damage from that. Oh yeah, I got oh, one on I my leg. I got to get that off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, don't make well, a roll. Everyone's... We'll assume that you can do it, uh, but you'll just take some yeah. damage. Okay. Okay. Well, everyone's preparing. Um, oh, oh, Nova will be like, uh, maybe we should focus on the tail and, and try to, to, to cut the tail off before it can use it again. A 
fine, a fine idea, young lady. Yes, we should. Uh, the, the tail is quite the thing on that beast, but you should be aware of its claws. It can tear through armor as well. Um, uh, in spite, cool. You were actually bleeding, right? Like, uh, oh, uh, like yeah. If, uh, you've not really taken any action, so I'm just going to roll a little bit of damage for you because you've been bleeding. I, I, out this I whole did time. do a uh, heal on myself. How much did you heal that... yourself for? Thirty. Thirty. Yeah. That's enough, and it would have stopped the bleeding. Oh. Awesome. Uh, um, so the way um, that mechanic works, by the way, is you have to heal the amount of damage the bite did or use like a medicine check or use like lesser restoration or greater restoration to stop the bleeding. So like oh, when you healed yourself, okay. it was enough to seal the wound, basically. So um, does that mean I still regain that HP? Or You still regain that HP, yeah. Okay. You just have to, to stop the bleeding, it has to be an amount higher, equal to or higher than the damage you received. Um, okay. And it's cumulative. Um, so like if you had healed 10 and then the next round you'd healed 15, that would have been enough and it eventually would have closed up um, sure i i think i'll also um with the turn after i guess or this third turn in this whatever um mm -hmm. i'll do aura of vitality as well and because everyone has got beacon of hope on them everyone is going to get 12 healing or no one person is going to get 12 healing every turn until this thing comes back do you um, want to focus on your party or do you want to focus on the npcs to begin with yeah um so yeah all of us and then 12 well you're gonna have to divvy that out so like you you elect who gets like you know 12 then another 12 then another okay, 12. 12 to myself like century century took a bunch ayla took a bunch you took a bunch so what um, is this like seven turns left yeah i'd say so yeah so me so century gained 12 lucius gained 12 nova gained i don't need 12, anything ayla gained 12. i don't uh, need anything Oh god, turn two and okay, turn one to three. <laughs> gain twelve sentry, gain twelve Ayla. Thank you. And mm -hmm. then I'll just throw it out to the crowd. <laughs> Ayla's not a max. It. Do you want to give another one to Ayla? Ayla's I'll not give a max. Another yet. one to Ayla and then the Sentry, are you are max? Like... Yeah, I'm maxed. Then I've got max. three then, turns yeah. with just NPCs. <laughs> yeah, like um to be in all fairness the knights all of the knights are like no no you must heal lady penelope first please heal, heal our lady um and radovan is like he looks at you and he, he nods he's like yeah he'll heal the knight she's the he, he probably would say she's the strongest among us heal lady penelope okay in that case she gets 12 times 3 so 36 36 she Healing. she her wounds like yeah she can see that she's she, you know she probably had several of these spines that she'd removed from her like she was badly injured as well um and the wounds begin to knit and she kind of looks and you ah fellow avian uh, you do not look like any uh, you do not look like any avian knight that i know but uh thank you very much uh for your your kind healing wait why uh, well, am i french you, now i don't know uh if you need I, more... i'm very bad at doing spanish so <laughs> that's why it sounds french if you need any more, just let's just say li live in La Vida Loca. Oh no, wait, that's not. Um, just uh... <laughs> <laughs> that is such a fucking in joke. Nobody will understand. I know, it's oh right. my <laughs> god, that was so good. <laughs> yes, right. Uh, live in La Vida Loca very well. If you, I will make if that you need, <laughs> don't make that canon. Come close. You dare. <laughs> uh, some sort of magic ritual, I see. <laughs> But we need to prepare the, 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 the well, the defense. Uh, I think we'll be up the front to uh, distract this. I will join you. Me and my guys. mates will fight, will, will fight with you. We will be there with you. Perfect. Uh, how much time do we have left? Sentry has um, a spell one off. We have enough time for it to be next week <laughs> so that I can properly stat up all of these NPCs and stuff. Okay. Because um, I was kind of expecting the fight to be done this week uh, and then Sentry was just like, no, 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 no. Go away. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Classic storm chasers. Uh, yeah. Putting it off for another time. <laughs> yeah, I was like, it's all right. I'll have the Manticore knock out the knights and then I don't need to run worry about running them in, as NPCs. I can just have the party fight this monster. That'll be no, easy. Yeah. Easy, no, no problem. Yeah. No. <laughs> Rhiannon well, came in and went, no, 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 no. No, no, no. I mean, that fucking amazing play. Away. <laughs> yeah, amazing play. I, I am going to regenerate back. all of its Thanks. tail spines, however. Yes. That's one thing Aww. I want to do. It's gonna yeah, it's going to have all of its tail spines when it comes back. What if it doesn't come back? What if it thinks about its life choices and is like... Maybe it will. You know what? I'm not into it. it. I'm just not no, into maybe... it. I'm going to go... 
Yeah. Maybe this is a big uh, maybe evil just monster. Made it run into a village and it's now just tearing that up. <laughs> 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 uh, not quite enough to get to another now. village. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, they well. should have a village there. Out of sight, but uh, out of mind. Uh, cool. Well, well, we'll leave it there. I'm I'm glad that we at least got to meet uh, Lady Lady Penelope of the Splendid Penavoli. Yeah, <laughs> Penelope uh, of the Penavoli. Radavid? Radavan. 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 Yep. Uh, who is a Harangon. If Radavan, you're Radavan. With the new race uh, from Wild Bill and the Witch Light. Right. It's a Haring, oh. Harangon, yeah. And then, cool. uh, so and then and Dago, who is the satyr musician who has fucked out of there. It's like, I'm out. See you later. <laughs> Oh. Peace. Mwah. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, well, I mean, we'll finish the fight next week in our Halloween special, and by oh. Halloween special, I mean we'll be in costume. We'll be, dressed up. We'll be in uh, costume. Yeah. yeah. I, do you know what? Somebody has made a point that every time we've done like a Halloween episode, it goes tragically bad. Like, as in, like yeah. people die, or yeah. like NPC. It's like really dark, serious, like emotional stuff happens, and yep. it's while we're fucking dressed up in stupid outfits every time. Yeah. I'm gonna cry, uh, It's gonna be through three layers of makeup. Yeah, so. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, you can look forward to seeing those next week. Next mm. week, very exciting. That's right. Um, Tom, have you cool. got a costume? I do, yeah. I put a lot he's, of time and money actually... into mine. Uh, oh, nice. excited! I spent a long, yeah. long time oh. doing it, and I'm very. I know excited uh, to some folks it. ordered costumes that sadly won't arrive in time. So I know, uh, like, Stop yeah, me. there's going to be some people who it won't be as as what they hoped, but uh, we can still do some fun stuff. I think. Um, Fine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm very like, excited to see fun. Trot and Sen and Trot and Rhiannon's because I have no idea <laughs> like what they're gonna you be you have no idea what i'm doing <laughs> oh, was good. Mine last year. I, that's tom's but all i know about yours kim is you've said it's gonna be garbage because it's not what you were planning to do <laughs> like that's what i know about well, yours i may have turned it around i may have okay okay, around. okay. Oh! all right nice okay nice. i'm excited then i'm excited <laughs> the last thing i heard from you was like no <laughs> it was like a. Yeah. it was don't bad worry about. but I, I may have done something you've made else. it good nice. <laughs> well, nice i gotta make mine i gotta make mine tomorrow and tuesday so you still need to make uh, it yeah that's what? fine i'll put it together oh my Fucking god cosplay cosplay you do the night before the con tom hazel that's how i it's did done. mine a month ago i want this to yeah be well you bought yours you mostly <laughs> bought yours no, I, I made some pieces too some oh. pieces yeah i bought oh. mine i've got to make a few pieces of mine so um because uh, I've got well, two I'm... Halloween costumes. I have my Halloween costume for personal party time, and then I've got High Rollers Halloween costume. Yeah, yeah fair enough. So... Um, well, anyway, uh, I think it's time anyway. for some donation. Indeed. Um, which is, of course, yeah. Spanish for donations. Donation. <laughs> uh, it sounds French, I know, but it Do you... I'm sure somebody would have pointed this out, but uh... actually, no, I'll leave it. I'll leave it for, for chat to figure out. Okay. What? Don't worry. Carry on. Oh, okay. No context of what they're looking for, but they'll figure it out. Um, the Herve has donated with uh, High Rollers, VOD Squad again uh, for me, but finally got some free time and, uh, as I've just completed my Masters. Congratulations. Um, I wouldn't have been able to get through these past two years without being able to watch all of you tell this amazing story. Have a warm plate on me. Thank you very much, The Herve, and Grant. Thanks well for done. the plate. Um, yeah, Reaper's you. passed. Thank you very much. He's with a message that says, uh, "Y'all have been killing it, and thank you for being my distraction at work." Much love, cloudy skies from Austin, Texas. Cloudy. Thank you. Uh, DBL underscore C underscore ZX. Uh, thank you very much. They say a white a wayfinder brings the lost home, just like how this donation found its way to you. Take the money and run, you wonderful people. <laughs> I'll be watching you folks tell <laughs> these amazing stories until the end. Yep, we're gone. No refunds on that one. Bye. We got it. <laughs> um, Crispy with a half hundo and no message. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Crispy. Thank you very much. Um, Natalie June Hawthorne. I've been prepping for the next uh, for my next campaigns. The same world my current players are in, but ten thousand years in the future. Ten thousand. Nice. Where oh. everything is civilization, and the Fae want to restore the world, uh, the realms, to their wild state. Uh, this has given me much inspiration. That's nice. Cool. I like that. It's cool. yeah, uh, classic. Varys with a donation and no message. Thank you very much. Viking Fungus with a donation and no message. Thank you very much. 
Yellow Hat Stealer, just donating to my favorite D&D stream, still on the VOD squad for now. That's okay. Just made it to episode 100 and slowly catching up. And another uh, donation from yeah, Yellow Hat Stealer. Uh, just wanted to say to Trot that last week I realized you were the same walrus I loved watching in Skylands eight years ago. <laughs> and just... Uh, and just how waited for each episode of that show, and now I wait each week for this one. Thank you. For wow. What all of you do. See you live soon. Have Thank you, Kindly. That's a Thank long time. Kindly. Yellow Hat mm. Stealer. Um, and also, I believe there is some things in the Discord. Oh, wait, there was also a donation from Fail that says Rose Meadow is the Feywild. Uh, Ro Rose Meadow in the Feywild is the best thing ever. Closely followed by Thalia <laughs> just carrying her snakes around in her clothes, as one does. Nice Spanish accent yeah. there, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent episode. I'm excited yes. for the Halloween costumes next week. Thank you very much, Fail. Um, Thank you. And we had some bits from MK13 Wolf, 25 dollary dues in bits. Mm -hmm. I started this week on the back foot. I stopped working at my job that I had for three years, a bit of a setback on the old pay, but I just couldn't work for my boss after what he said to me. If you're wondering, uh what you said i was fired uh sorry to hear that mk13 wolf um again only donate if you feel you have the means um absolutely sorry to hear that um and thank you for the donation as well uh yog donos we had frog brain been watching you since i was a kid this Wait. makes me happy um sorry i think that was a joke you know mk wolfie always donates with jokes yeah. But I just, I couldn't work for my boss after what he said to me. If you're wondering what he said, I was fired. It's like, I couldn't work for my boss yeah. after he told me I was fired. Uh -huh. I don't know if he's, it I didn't think, pass. but then the part, it did not the part pass. ahead of that, the bit before that, saying it's the setback from your pay, yeah, I, is it a joke? Um, is I don't joke? know. Yeah. It is. is or is he making is, a joke of a real Wolfie. thing? Yeah. It is the boy that cried wolf. Rise the lion. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sorry, MK Wolfie, if we are thinking it's a joke or not. I'll never tell. I'll never tell. There you I'll go. I'll never tell. That's not a timing thing. I'm re look. It's on you. <laughs> <laughs> you try uh, pure text messages every week and like try and understand the context and emotions behind them. It's hard, okay? Donate with voice messages from now on. Uh, and yeah. also, yeah. Thank you, Frog Brain. Been watching you since I was a kid. Thanks, Frog Brain. Happy. And also, uh, Oh, just a couple of emotes in the Discord as well. New emotes from Kirsten. Cool. Kirst yeah, Kirsten made a couple of uh, Nodders and Nopers emotes. They're pretty good. Nova and Ayla. Oh, cool. They're pretty great. Oh, um, <laughs> you'll That's see so those cute. soon, I'm sure. Um, and that is the lot. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. everybody. Thank you. Thanks um, for the great episode, everybody. That was a fun one. I got to indeed. be Rose Meadow playing D&D and do stupid Feywild stuff. It's We're pretty in the cool. Feywild. Yay. Wild. Yeah, it's wild. We got there. <laughs> is this uh, yeah. is this like a custom creature? This this thing or? Yeah, the manticore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh. Okay. Yeah. Those spines are brutal. Nasty. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's almost cool, like right? I I have to really I have to come up with ways to try and actually do stuff Chow. to you guys because you're so strong. <laughs> like mm -hmm. if I just do hit points, you just heal it. So I'm like, okay, what if like the spines give them penalties and they have to remove them and stuff like that? Like mm -hmm. trying to like I make them bleed every time they do stuff. Like this, I'm desperate. <laughs> I'm desperate, Trot. Yeah. Tom, I'm just like, please, yeah, please, Trot. I need a fight. Uh, but then still, Century just, uh, fuck off. That's how it works. Yeah, sometimes that's how <laughs> it goes. Oh, fuck off. But that, that at least made it interesting. Like, I feel like that's not just like, oh, you've banished it to another realm and the fight's over, never mind. Like, now it's at least like, okay, it's going to come back, but like, you've bought some time to figure stuff out <laughs> yeah. and it's made yeah. it more it's like interesting. It's like a really deadly boomerang. And I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, it's, like, it's coming back! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Just like, also, I didn't know how you get, like, you guys were like, oh, we're going to heal everybody, and I guess we'll we'll just fight again. I was like, are they going to try and grab people and hide? Are they going to try and, like, run? Like, what are they going to do? Just, like, you could just hidden. You could have done, but you're not now, so you're fighting nah. again, so. Because we're heroes. Yeah. Nice. Apparently. Cool. I love it. Love it. Well, love we'll be it. back next week. Thanks very much. Thank you to our sponsors, Privateer Press and D&D Beyond. Go and check mm -hmm. out Iron Kingdoms, Borderlands and Beyond. And just check out the Iron Kingdom setting uh, with their five fifth edition rule books. Uh, yes. Anyway, they're really, really cool. And check out D&D Beyond as well, because it is the best way to play D&D online, especially. You know um, it. it. You is. know it. You it love it. Indeed. 
And uh, yeah, thanks for all your support, everybody. Thanks for the 100k, and we will see you all very soon. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.